Teams lost six out of seven under Part E to start with. And then starting with the Texas game two seasons ago, the Cougars have gone 15-3 and 1 since that time, passing for over 7,500 yards. So, Bum Phillips, although he is known for the run and shoot, he's also known as being one of the greatest linebackers to ever play the game of football. So he knows about the importance of defense, and we haven't talked a lot about Houston's defense, but they have a good one. I think they've got a great defense. I've, I've watched them a couple games, and they, they're really big, and they're really strong. Roman Anderson will be kicking off for Houston. That's Trooper Taylor, number two. Number 20 is Malcolm Frank, returning for the Baylor Bears. So here we go. As you got the Baylor claw on one side versus the Cougar claw on the other. The Baylor Bears have won the last three meetings between these two teams here in the Astrodome. So Baylor almost feels like this is the home field advantage, although Houston won last year's game in Waco. They both got good special teams now. They both got good cover teams and good return teams. And that's usually the mark of a champion, isn't it, Coach? Yes, it is. Let's go get him, and right. Anderson kicks it off. Trooper Taylor at about the 15-yard line. Good coverage by Houston at the 17. Any good football team can cover like that. Guess who that was? That was Ted Party, the coach's son, number 32, the first one down for Houston. So Brad Gable now will set it up coming off his best game ever at Baylor. He was 16 of 26 last week for 347 yards, and that's fifth best in Baylor history. And we're talking about some dandy quarterbacks at Baylor. Gable will have Elwin Raphael, the leading running back, behind him along with Jeffrey Murray, and that will be Raphael. And oh my goodness, is he met at the line of scrimmage by Alton Montgomery, the strong safety for Houston. Taking a look at the Baylor Bears, Raphael is the leading rusher, and Murray is the leading receiver. He has 19 catches on the season for Baylor, and that's a big offensive line, led by John Turnpaw, who is 330 pounds. That offensive line for Baylor averages about 280 across the... Yard line of Baylor, and if 
Williams had been able to hold on to it, we would have had a 75-yard touchdown pass to start the game. There's the backfield. Weatherspoon, one of the nation's best. He's a spark plug. At 5'7", 215 pounds, Hazard leads the nation in pass receiving with 33 catches. That line is a senior outfit. Holly, Forsyth, and Baines have played together since Klein High School days, and they're all big up around the 280-pound range. There goes Weatherspoon over left guard, and he's brought down at about uh, the 27-yard line. Reggie Howard and John Godfrey on the tackle for Baylor. Big line by the Baylor Bears. Robbie Jones at 6'3", 266, gets a lot of press. Santana Dotson is also a good one. The linebackers, James Francis may be the best in the nation. At 248 pounds, 6'4", a pure athlete. And the defensive backs, they'll play more than that. They'll have nickel coverage for most of the game. Blackman is the star there. He's an All-Southwest Conference All-American. Third down now for Houston. About seven. Ware's got plenty of time. Here comes the pressure, and Ware tackles for a loss at the 19-yard line. Now the Baylor Bears did a good job of coverage, and finally John Godfrey, the 6'4", 249-pound junior out of Dallas South Oak Cliff, got to him. They have a, yeah, they have they went to a three-man front. Baylor has. They're not playing four linemen. They're playing three down linemen. And Bum, they did a good job with the seven defensive backs. That Really covering on the floor. Excellent job. Simon Rodriguez will be back to punt for Houston. He averages about 41 per kick and going to take a Houston bounce. A mistake by Baylor to let it go. Anderson will try to bring it back and he's smothered at the 22 yard line. Great special game, though. Boy, I'll say Carlos Leon was the first one down for Houston. So we've had a couple of punts already early in this game. We'll be back with more on AJC in just a moment. Believe it or not, Houston has had the punt only six times in the first three games, and already on the first possession, Rodriguez had the punt. You don't see that very often. Out went Raphael around the right side, and there is that great Houston pursuit led by Eric Blunt. And he's starting his first game tonight. Also, Darren Warren was in there on the tackle, but Blunt is 6-1. He's a freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee. Well, that's good for two. Huh? Yeah, they've got everybody up on the line of scrimmage. They're going to make them throw the football, what it looks like, especially on early down. They do a good job of filling the gap, don't they? Oh, yeah. The jack's quick. He's the football. Brad Gable at the controls for Baylor. Fakes the draw play and will go to the short man, and that should be Murray out of the right flat up to about the 30-yard line. And Tyrone Jones, the youngster out of Tyler, he's the senior leader for the Houston team made the tackle. But Jeffrey Murray with his 20th reception on the season. You know, they've had a lot of great backs in the NFL here from Baylor. It's a tough, tough little pattern right here. The fullback goes through the line of scrimmage and takes draw to the tailback. That'll be third down, and Baylor needs three for a first down at about the 32 of Houston. Or at Baylor, I should say. Makes the draw play again. He'll go to the same pattern, and there was... That was collision, and Tyrone Jones was covering on the play. That was the same pass play, but to the opposite side of the field. Murray was the intended receiver, and Jones was all over him. Jones is pretty active for a linebacker, isn't he, Bump? Yes, sir. Uh, he can move. So Pete Rutter, who had a 51-yarder on his first punt, will punt again to Weatherspoon. Now Weatherspoon should be able to run this one back. He'll get it at the 22-yard line. Look at his ability to shift. He can pull here as he gets to about the 31, so return of about nine, but again, another great punt by Rudder. Tackle on the play was Mike McKenzie and Danny Servants for Baylor. That's great coverage here. Look, both of these teams have very special teams. They're getting under control. They get down there. They spread out good. Get under control. The thing you
you don't want to do with Weatherspoon, do you is leave a lane open somewhere. No, that guy's quicker than a men or swimming the zipper. I mean, he can run. <laughs> that sounds pretty quick. Andre Ware now will try to get... He had a man open on the first series. Coming to the near side is Emmanuel Hazard. He'll be over there with Paul Smith. Change that now to this. And Patrick Cooper. There was a flag on the play. The pass was good to Henry LeBlanc, but Houston may have been guilty of moving a little quickly on the line of scrimmage. Robert Blackman made the tackle for Baylor. It will be a legal procedure against Houston. They will take. Against Arizona State, the Cougars were whistled for 286 <laughs> yards in penalties, and it didn't slow them down a little. No, they didn't. This is first and 30, they made 30. This is first and 40, they made 40. <laughs> that is the kind of offense that Houston runs. It doesn't seem like penalties or anything else seems to slow them down, although Baylor did on that first series. It changed up. They went to a full man across this series, but I thought they might keep changing the defense. I think they will change, and let's see. They've got uh, three down linemen now with a man standing up over there. Baylor dropping six defensive backs. Mm -hmm. All right. There's only no way. Well, he had the pass. Yeah, he yeah, had picked the right man, too. Go, Baylor! Recognize his foot, too. He's second down now, and Houston needs 15. Where? Oh, and it's deflected. Looks like it was knocked down by Malcolm Plank. Who came up, the junior out of Beaumont Central, came up and deflected. It was intended for Patrick Cooper on the left side. Well, this may be the slowest start so far this season for Andre Ware, but then Baylor's strategy was is they not let the Cougars strike. They don't, don't let them get a deep one. That's what their strategy is. Make them have to work for it. Hoping that maybe they wouldn't have the patience because Ware has been able to strike so quickly this season. Baylor fans are up, imploring their defense to hold here. Ware needs 15 on third down, and he'll pass it back to Kimball Anders around the left side, and it won't be enough. Anders up to about the 35-yard line. Malcolm Plank coming from his right corner position to make the tackle for Baylor, and so Simon Rodriguez will be called on to punt for the second time in two possessions. Limping off the field, Gary Joe Kinney, who is the leading for Baylor this year with 55 tackles coming in. So Rodriguez and Stutter have been doing a good job of punting the ball, or rudder, I should say, punting the ball back and forth. There's a flag on the play. We'll wait and see if somebody moves too quickly. That'll be Greg Anderson, and he gets the lane momentarily across the 32, about the 33-yard line. So Baylor with pretty good field position. That was Frank Bryant. Now covering the play for Houston, and the referees will talk it over. The offside Baylor. So that will move the ball up five yards and make it fourth down. Houston would still need about two for a first. It was in the lined up offside. They didn't like jump. Like. That's what Grant was uh, talking to the referee about. Now. Weatherspoon is on every special team, either as a receiver or a blocker, and watch him in the backfield now because he is one of the blockers for the punt team for Houston. I'm not saying Houston would do it now because field position is not in their favor, but if need be, you could snap it to Weatherspoon in a punting situation later in the game if Houston needed to gamble and go for it. It's fourth down about two. Because Weatherspoon is in a perfect position to take the snap from center. And then this snap is a good one, too. Let's go, man! Rodriguez back to punt. Not 
much air time on this one. Anderson, another great move, and gets to the 30-yard line. So just about what they started out with, Frank Bryan again on the tackle. So almost an instant replay of the last play. We still have no score. Baylor and Houston in the dome. That much time remaining in the first quarter.
That's a first down for Houston. That's 34 catches on the season for the leading receiver in college football, Emmanuel Hazard. Berlin Brown was the leader for Houston. He broke his ankle. Unfortunate accident against Arizona State. Weatherspoon. He keeps twisting and turning Weatherspoon inside bigger territory. He's finally brought down at the 32-yard line by Daniel Morgan. Oh, my goodness. Can this young man run? It is like a runaway bowling ball. Yeah. He, he made a great run on that one because he's uh, gone much. He's a tough to tackle. But you, don't, you know, you just bounce off the hill now. He don't go down. The three people hit him there. Oh, my. First and ten, Houston quickly back to the attack. Incompleted pass intended for Kimball Anders, the running back out of Galveston Ball. He's a veteran. Good pass receiver, and he knows what to do with it when he catches it. Andre Ware so far is two of six now for 35 yards. Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon's last one was for 25 yards. Let me second down, 10 meters. That's Hazard coming in motion. Inside to Kimball Ander. Now, Baylor has seen that quite a bit. That worked very well against the Bears last year in Waco, and Gary Joe Kinney would not be fooled on that play. No. Stayed at home. Sometimes when you over-pursue, this play can catch you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you got you got to protect your own territory. you got to fight your own battle first. Well, Francis, uh, Kenny on the tackle. Francis on the sideline with his passing situation. Well, everyone is a passing situation for Houston. The play was intended for Patrick Cooper, overthrown by Andre Ware. So Baylor has done as good a job, and there's the veteran we talked about before the game, Mike Welch. Blackman. Blackman and Welch. Now Roman Anderson will be attempting a 37-yard tack on 10, about 47 yards. Ken Perry is the holder. Frank Bryan the snapper. this year they do not use a kicking tee in college football. Anderson looks like he may have the leg. It's gone. Forty-seven yard field goal by Roman Anderson and the Cougars get on the board first. Three to nothing. Watch it again. That's pretty good confidence. You had some good field goal kickers. Yeah, Tony Fish is awful good, and Martin Anderson is the all-time leader in percentage of kicks. I, just, I really thought it might hurt them more than it did, but it evidently hadn't. Uh, no tea. Well, you, you might remember uh, Roman's father, Billy Guy Anderson. He led the nation in passing at Tulsa before he went to the NFL. Yeah, yeah I remember him. So Jack Pardee watches the Cougars get on the board early. Anderson, so far this season, has been very successful came in 6 of 12 in the field goal department and made all of his extra points. So now 7 of 13 from the field goal range for Roman Anderson. Trooper Taylor and Malcolm Frank back deep for Baylor. So far we have 6.06 left to play in the first quarter and Houston leads it 3 to nothing. Now, usually about this time in the first quarter, the Cougars have scored a couple of touchdowns, but Baylor has done a good job, and Anderson just got it on his own that time with an excellent kick. Earlier today, Texas Tech came from behind to defeat Texas A&M 27-24, so that keeps the Red Raiders right in the Southwest Conference picture, and Grant Taft, Jack Hardy know what a big score that is because they both must play the Aggies. Houston plays Texas A&M next week. Baylor catches them in a couple of weeks in Waco. Anderson deep. Malcolm Frank across the 15. And oh, my goodness. What a hit. By number 47, Kirk Russell. A 6'1", 223-pounder. 
out of Metairie, Louisiana. The scoring drive by Houston on that last series, six plays, 30, covering 33 yards. Roman Anderson with a field goal. So we have seen two well-coached teams here, both in their special teams work defensively and offensively. But the defense has been shutting off the offense so far. Six minutes remaining to play in the first quarter. In motion goes Murray. Play action. Big rush. Gable does a good job of evading one tackler, and it's almost intercepted on the play by Tyrone Jones. It went right through his hands. So Gable getting a rush. It looked like maybe Darren Warren and Craig Beasy were applying the pressure up front. again by Burnett and Gable never had time to get it off. Reggie Burnett with a big, big rush. Burnett out of Rayville, Louisiana, the home of the biggie Elvin Hayes. And he must have looked like Elvin Hayes to Gable that time. So again, Rudder will be punting for the fourth time. So far, he's punted for 51, 50, and 52 yards. This time, not a real good spiral. One of the short men will take it right at the 50-yard line. That was Jamie Mouton who caught the punt, and it'll be good field position for Houston right at midfield. 31-yard punt for Rudder. Those are the big wide bodies on the bench now, the Baylor offensive line. And I imagine they're getting a good talking to right now. F.A. Dry, and mm -hmm. John Goodner, and Robert James, good staff. Bill Lane, good staff for Grant Tapp. Manuel Hazard and Brian Williams at the top of your screen for Andre Ware. Paul Smith, Henry LeBlanc to the near side. Kimball Anders, a running back, quick pass, LeBlanc. And he gains about five before Baylor catches up with him. Michael Frank was the first one to the football. It's almost like a dive play. It's Brad Gable checking up with the coach's box, and the coach is giving him a talking to. Huh? Five yards. Back off of him a little bit. They'll hit him. you got to stay close to him. Andre Ware overloaded the left side, going long on the bomb. Intended again for Brian Williams, and he was covered very well on the play by Charles Bell, a junior out of Waco. Now, this time they send three wide receivers up to the top. It was only with the, with the man and with that guy, and with the short man, and then overlapping with the safety, but they were expecting to come to the post. They didn't. They went up the sideline. Now, remember, this is almost an option in the air. That's what they like to call it. Where it gets the play, and then after the receivers start the play, they can make their own cuts, and it's up to where to read the cuts and go to whichever man he wants to go to. Almost an option. Offense. They're going to go wrong again. There was some contact, but the ball was overthrown. No play. I don't believe, I don't believe that he could have gotten the pass had it not been contact, and I think that's what the official is. Paul Smith, Andre Ware coming over to talk to the side judge. Simon Rodriguez will punt. Rodriguez has punted 52 and 39 yards. So his third punt, so we've already had seven punts in the first quarter by these two teams. 
trying to get it down inside the 10, and he does. He angles it out at about the nine-yard line. 41-yard punt for Simon Rodriguez. 4.22 left to play in the first quarter. Houston leading at 3 to nothing. So far, the Baylor offense has just been unable to move the football at all on Houston. Some of the Houston Cougar fans enjoying it here in the Astrodome. A good crowd, sir. Nice crowd, and how do you like that new football feel now? They've got a new AstroTurf. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot better than, than it used to be. <laughs> the players enjoy it a lot better, I know. Well, they have turf, uh, especially for the Cougars and the Oilers, and then they have a baseball turf they can roll out also. A lot more padding and a lot safer for the players. All right on the 10-yard line. Gable, nowhere. Just a straight handoff up the middle. Trey Hooper and Alfred Oglesby really plugged it up for Houston. Oglesby at 270 pounds. The Pro Scouts really like him. He's old man, isn't he? Number 96, and I tell you, he's tough to block. And Trey Hooper said to say hi to all his friends in Mineral Wells, Texas. Watching HSE. He's a youngster. He's going to see a lot of time here at Houston before he's through. Coming wide is Raphael, and it looks like there was a flag. Could have been a face man. Could have been. Tyrone Jones was in for Houston. See if we can see it here again, Bob. Yep. They offset the back over here then. They offset the half back over here. No, but no. They've been calling a holding penalty yeah. against Baylor. Now watch Murray. Is he holding Jones with his left? Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Well, it's not a face mask. It's a holding call on Jeffrey Murray, the Baylor fullback. So Jones will have the option. Holding. Offense. Decline. Third down. They don't want to have uh, have Baylor have the down over. They have a lot of confidence in their defense. So that was a five-yard gain by Raphael, but Baylor will still need five for first. Third down. Gable rolls right. Has a man, and he's got it. It's a completion to Reggie Miller. Good throw and an excellent catch. And it's good enough for a Baylor first down. Watch from the quarterback's point of view. Excellent catch. Really was a good catch. Miller is a freshman out of Waco, Texas. They don't play like one. <laughs> Scooped it right up. Uh-oh. Big hole for Raphael, and it closes in a hurry. And what a great job by Cornelius Price. That's what you like your cornerbacks to do. You've got to have cornerbacks that can force as well as cover. Looked like he was headed for big, big gain on the play. And Price came in, and look at Jones come out also to help out. Tyrone Jones, number six, very active. You'll see him all over. He's also an academic All-America as you take a look at Cornelius Price, one of the more active cornerbacks. Pat Thomas does a super job with his defensive secondary for Houston. Raphael going to go wide, gets a couple. Trey Hooper was in there first for Houston. Pat doesn't know how to coach him. He's played well enough. Well, well an All-American at Texas A&M, played for the Rams for many years. And Thomas's trademark at Houston, his defensive backs will close to that football better than any you'll see anywhere. He was always tough, yeah. He's going to teach him tough. Third down again for Baylor. Needing about six. Going to be offsides on Houston. Gable will have a free down to operate with. The catch was good by Jeffrey Murray. 
He may have fallen short of the first down. Reggie Burnett defending. So Baylor may want to take that penalty. There's your offsides. It was on Oglesby. necessary yardage for the first down to get out of a deep shadow back on their own 10 yard line draw play goes to Murray good running room as he gets across the 40 dives to the 42 Darren Warren Tyrone Jones tackling for Houston but a nice game by the Bears they really crossed up Houston's defense watch the inside of that offensive line operate trap Bill Yep. Good angle there, isn't yeah. it? Second down, Gable needs about three. Raphael, right side, looking for a hole. There's a flag, and uh, usually that means <laughs> offensive holding. Alfred Oglesby made the tackle for Houston. Not a good sign. Whenever you see it throw. thrown in there, huh? Yeah, the umpire throws it. It's not a good sign. That's what it'll be, holding on Baylor. So bring it back. With 108 left to play in the first quarter. Houston leading at 3 nothing over Baylor. Roman Anderson with a 47 yard field goal. Offense. They'll take it back and they'll replay second down. Houston, uh, as we told you, leads the nation in almost every category, including penalties per game, and now Baylor getting in on the app. I couldn't believe how many they got in Arizona State. They still win. Nice play on oh, Raphael, and he gets just shy of the 40-yard line. Tyrone Jones ran him out of bounds. Quick screen play. Yeah, yeah. You get it to a good receiver and let him run. Billy Johnson used to run that play real well. Baylor has sent a slew of running backs to the NFL, and they may have a couple more to send in Raphael and Murray, who excel in catching the ball out of the backfield. It seems to be the big thing nowadays. Guys that can catch as well as run. Third down now for Baylor, needing 10 yards for a first. Here comes pressure by Houston, and he gets it off just in time, and he overthrows his receiver, Greg Anderson, at the 48-yard line. There is a flag on the play, however, so hold everything. And it came late. Houston had the blitz. Offsides, Houston. So the Cougars shooting themselves in the foot with penalties. Going to give Baylor another chance on third down. Looked like Burnett may have been offside trying to blitz from the left side. That moves the Baylor line of scrimmage to the 42-yard line. Third down, Baylor needs five. Now, the last two third downs, Baylor has been able to convert. Across the middle for Gable, but I don't think Murray's going to get there this time. Jeffrey Murray fell down right at the 45-yard line. Tyrone Jones was right there. And Baylor will be about a yard short of the first. And Grant Taft doesn't want to take a chance. I think the players wanted to go for it, but Grant didn't. Yeah, you don't want to do that. It's, you know, you're in the ball game. Three nothing is like being tied. Go ahead and put him back in the hole. I think Baylor did a good job of getting out from the shadow of its own goalpost. I do too. They gained a lot of yardage right there against a good defensive football team. Rudder with a booming punt. Look at the leg on that youngster as he kicks it all the way into the Houston end zone for a touchback. That ball travels 65 yards in the air. Wow. 
Watch him again, the youngster, Pete Rudder. Need that extension. Kicked himself off the ground about eight inches. That's why it went so far. Out of Katy, Texas. He came up to you before the game. Yeah. Said, uh, want to say hello to you. The youngster remembers your years with the Oilers, and now Ware will have it on his own 20-yard line. Houston called a timeout, and Ware wasn't aware of it. <laughs> Looked like I can't find Hazard. Looks like they've got Kimball Anders in. Mm -hmm. And Rutherford. Yep, they've got yeah. them both in the game yeah. together. Now Ware directing traffic again. Still has four seconds, three seconds left. He better get the playoff. One second, he just beat the clock. Third time in a row, LeBlanc has not been able to hold on to the football. He looks like he's in pain. Clifford Ellison defending. He's just been kind of behind him a little. It's been hard to hold on to that. The Cougars now really can't afford many more injuries, as you know. Especially in that area. Yeah, because of the probation. They weren't able to recruit the regular number of players this year. They only brought in 15. Looks like he may have turned his knee on that AstroTurf just as he was trying. Now, Berlin Brown is out. Yeah. And Jenkins told us before the game he couldn't afford to have another receiver go down because when you use four wide receivers each play, you've got to have about, what, seven or eight? I'd say double, yeah, eight. All right, Bum, check it out again. Hide. Well, it's gonna be. Baylor so far has done an excellent job with their seven defensive backs. They have three down linemen, one back, and they're gonna run the option to Weatherspoon. Big running room to the 29. A flag in the play could be holding Houston. Frankie Smith made the tackle for Baylor. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. And we're going to take a break in the action. There's a flag on the play. We'll read it for you and have it for you when we come back. The Cougars were the only points in the first period. A field goal by Roman Anderson. And Houston leads it 3 to nothing on HSE. Well, we thought it was the end of the first quarter, but the Cougars were penalized and the ball back at the 10-yard line. It'll bring up second down in about two time zones for Andre Ware. That's just his distance. Yeah, about 20 yards needed for Houston. Draw play, Kimball Anders, and he worms his way up to about the 15-yard line. Gary Joe Kinney made the tackle for Baylor. So now, with no time showing on the clock, we'll change ends at the end of the first quarter of play. And Houston leading at three to nothing over the Baylor Bears. Well, a big, big game for Grant Taft. He started his season off 0-2, losing to Oklahoma and Georgia. But in the lineup for the University of Houston. He had a sore shoulder coming into this game and they were gonna try not to play him to have him ready for next week. But now with LeBlanc going down, 
It looks like Tracy Good will be forced into action, so it'll be Good, Paul Smith, Patrick Cooper, along with Anders and Weatherspoon in the backfield for Houston, and that's Good in motion, number one. Where? Going to hold on to the football. Still got some time. He's got Anders open, and now he finds him at the 30, and it's first down Houston at the 35-yard line. Well, <laughs> that makes it awful tough when the guy can move like that and throw like that on the run. And, Bum, if we watch it again, look at where fake out the defensive back when he pumps. Now, there's no. a flag on the play. He'll come back this way. The back leaves Anders when he thinks where he's going to run yeah. with it. Oh, yeah. He's got to let somebody else cover him up. He can't leave that back. Well, apparently all is for naught as we have another penalty. Kimball Anders, one of the captains on this Cougar team, they call it the super back position. So it'll be third down again. I think it's a loss of down, however. It's not third down. I think it'll be fourth down. The referee said third down. And Simon Rodriguez will call a timeout because if it is indeed third down, he doesn't want to punt on third down. I don't think so. Must be what it is. I'll going back. Jack Pardee trying to get an explanation from the official. So the Cougars... Uh, not wanting has, to punt on third. Hope he has better luck getting explanations from officials than I did. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> in the sure. heat of in the heat of battle, though, you you never got a good explanation. Huh? No. Well, good luck to you, Jack. Well, apparently there was an illegal receiver downfield. One of the big offensive linemen, thinking that Ware might scramble, released too early. And that's what the penalty was called for. That 230-pound lineman was up downfield and behind the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third down for Andre Ware, needing 20 for a first down. The Cougars need to get to their own 30-yard line for a first down. Very low-scoring game. We thought we'd have a lot of fireworks for you today, but it hasn't been that way. It's been all defense, both sides. I miss it does, though. Where with plenty of time, he has Tracy Good at the 25, but Baylor did a smart thing. They let him complete the pass, and then Blackman wrapped him up along with Frankie Smith. Yeah, they're going to give you 18 yards. He's got a lot of poise, stands back in there. Oh, yeah. A lot of time. Who's that one? Next one. That's what Baylor was doing. You saw Frankie Smith, Robert Blackman corralling him. Simon Rodriguez will punt from his 12-yard line. Last punt was for 35 yards, but he killed it inside the 10-yard line. Now he gets off a good one, and that's Greg Anderson back on his own 30. Sure. There was a fumble on the play, but I think the ball was down. Greg Thompson was the man down under the ball for the Cougars, and apparently Anderson had hit the AstroTurf. Good punt by Simon, Simon Rodriguez. Forty-four yarder for Rodriguez. Now watch as Anderson goes down, and you can't let the AstroTurf create the fumble. No. The Brown fumble. cannot call the fumble. Really, uh impressed by the special team. Both of them great. I thought they were great in the film. There's two fans I saw. Tommy Kaiser does an excellent job with the special teams. In fact, that when I was out at the Houston practice, as we look at the Baylor Cup, they spend over an hour on special teams work every day. Raphael over his right guard, just shy of the 35-yard line. That was Alton Montgomery on the tackle for Houston. Well, so far, Raphael has rushed seven times for only 12 yards. So the leading rusher for Baylor, he could have gone a long way. Yep. Look at it again, Coach. He breaks, he breaks great, but he just didn't use real good judgment. 
It broke on him. Well, of course, you're a hero when it works. If you don't. Yep. Third down now for Baylor, needing eight. Gable going to roll, try to stay away from that Houston pressure, and he just couldn't find his man at the 45-yard line. It's intended for Lee Miles and Cornelius Price covering, but again, good pressure by the front five Excellent. for Houston. Excellent. Linebacker came late, too. Well, He's Coach, I'm going to tell you, the defense has been too much for the offense so far in this game. Yeah. Now, you said that's like always that. the way it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's because I always like defense. Oh, Rudder's been punting up a storm. Oh, Here's he another Danny. He's got it all the way back to the 10-yard line. Weatherspoon trying to find a wall. Can he get behind it? No. Good special teams work by Baylor. A 55-yard punt for Rudder. And Ron Needham made the tackle for Baylor. And there is the leg of Henry LeBlanc. The Cougars a bit concerned. He has a twisted right knee, but he should be back in action. We'll be back in action right after this break. Welcome back to the Dome as Andre Ware sets it up. 13 minutes left to play. Quick pass to Tracy Goody. Can't hold on to it. Houston has dropped about six passes here in the first half. And that's not going to look good on Andre Ware's. I didn't think he was ready mark. for it. Hmm? I didn't think he was ready for it. He might show it. Jim Eddy is on the old chalkboard talking to the defense. All right, look here. They're trying to wind it back. All right, look here. On the cut, please. The near formation. They're trying to wind it back. Second down now for Andre Ware. He still needs 10. Ball on the 20-yard line for Houston. Got a receiver. And that's his main man, Emmanuel Hazard. A gain of 15 yards and a first down. Houston, Robert Blackman on the coverage. But whenever you can get one-on-one -on -one coverage with Hazard, look out. You really like him. Of course, he wears the number of Jason Phillips, who had over 100 pass receptions for Houston last year. Where? We'll throw again. And he has his man. That's Patrick Cooper. A gain of almost 10 out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. So Ball was on the uh, defensive, or Charles Bell was on the defensive end for Baylor. Bum, it looks like Baylor has gone exclusively to a three-man front with one or two, well, I see right now one linebacker and yeah. seven defensive backs. And he'll rush every now and then. He'll get down and rush. They don't change personnel for it. They just, that's the way they keep them mixed up. Ware will throw it out. Oh, dangerous pass. Kimball Anders with some nice moves once he caught it down into Baylor territory at the 43. Gary Joe Kinney on the tackle. He threw that through some arms, and they weren't necessarily on his team. No, they weren't. It was a great catch to keep the concentration that long in the ball. Oh, I thought for a minute that Santana Dotson was that. No, that was Darren Franklin that almost got a paw on it for Baylor. So Kimball Anders with a nice little run. First down and 10 for Houston. Where plenty of time on the set. May have underthrown Hazard. Mike Welch defending for Baylor. Welch was out all of last season getting his knee repaired after knee surgery and did not play at the start of this season but came back strong last week. Mm -hmm. Right off the mark. And he is a good one, Mike Welch. Junior out of Sweetwater. Looks like he's playing where his eyes been breaking a little early.
Hazard and Williams to the near side of the field. Quick pass to Tracy Good, and it'll only get a couple. Good reaction by Baylor. Darren Franklin and Yarrick Long, number 48. Long had a brilliant game against Texas Tech last week. He's a youngster. Three yards on the play by Houston. It'll bring up third down, and the Cougars need seven. Where so far in the game is nine of 19 for 99 yards. He usually got that in the first five or six minutes, but this is a little better quality of competition, the Baylor Bear. Going to throw it, Weatherspoon, lots of running room, lots of blocking, Weatherspoon inside the 20, and he's down at the 10-yard line. Chuck Weatherspoon on a draw play, I'll call it a draw play, it was a screen draw for Houston. Yeah. Tom, this was a beautifully developed play. I love, I love the timing on it was actually. You got to give them a chance. You got to give them a chance to penetrate. And that's what he did. And of course, then that little kid there just does it all. From then on, he's going to run past his lineman. <laughs> Ware going for six in the end zone. The hazard overthrows him. Good job, too, you might say. He had him, though. He had him wide open. He just overthrew him. And he knows it. I don't care how good you are. You can't throw them all perfect. Weatherspoon now has 56 yards on two catches in the game. And those are the totals on Andre Ware. Weatherspoon will go out and Kimball Anders will check in for Houston. And this kid here's no slouch either. Good handle. Now he knows what to do with it. He catches not as strong a runner as Weatherspoon, but a better pass receiver. They're going to go in the end zone. Going to be interference. Intended for Patrick Cooper, interference on Baylor in the end zone. Cooper had his man beat badly. Was it Charles Bell? I think it was. Bell got turned around. Check it again, Bum. It looked like he turned that defensive back completely around on the play. Yeah, he had his back to him. Really call it face guarding, don't they? Yeah. He turned into him and pushed him. So the ball moves down to the two-yard line where it'll be first down and goal now for Andre Ware in Houston. And Houston, of course, without tight ends, they'll pass from here, too. They don't make them any different, does it? Mm -mm. I wouldn't know what to do down here with four wide receivers in. Well, pass to one of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to run it. <laughs> give it to Earl. Well, you, yeah, give it to Earl. I don't blame you. Well, they give it to Weatherspoon. Touchdown, Houston. Great blocks by Jason Jessup, Mike Holly, Byron Forsythe, Mike Giesler and Joey Baines, the big front line for Houston. Watch it again. Forsythe gets the big block right there. Yeah. Reggie Howard was moved right out of there by Byron Forsythe. And he is the All-American candidate out of Klein High School. Roman Anderson will try to tack on the extra point. And he is perfect on the year. 22 of 22 extra points for Roman Anderson. And the Houston Cougars now with a 10-0 lead over Baylor. Well, Bum, that was a good drive by the Cougars. I thought it was. They stayed with it. They had a little patience. They didn't try to, they didn't try to get it all at once. Quarterback made some good decisions. Now, earlier this year, especially last week against Temple, they were able to get the long gainer, get into the end zone after about only a minute or a minute and a half. And I think Baylor has tested the Houston's patience a little more this game. <laughs> no doubt about it. Baylor's playing good. Mm -hmm. you know, I tell you, you can just keep these people from running up down the field. You're playing good. What about that young man, Chuck Weatherspoon? Oh, yeah. C Spoon. He don't have all his letters on his name on his back. He got C Spoon. <laughs> I'll tell you, he is a load for he Houston. Is. One of the better running backs. Last year, Houston became the first team ever to have two wide receivers with 100-plus catches and Weatherspoon with 1,000 yards rushing. 
Now that's a lot of offense. Bob Young. Well, it was him showing something on offense. Bob's a great offensive line coach. He played for uh, the Cardinals for 16 years and played for me a couple. That was the first drive by Houston. Roman Anderson, field goal. Last one with a little more patience for Houston, covered a lot more ground. The key play, of course, coming on the pass play to Weatherspoon. So Anderson will be kicking it off. And it'll go to Greg Anderson. At about the 20 yard line, gets to the 27 before he's run out of bounds on the play. Craig Thompson ran him out of bounds. But it was a run back by Reggie Miller. All right, now here's the last drive by Houston. 10 plays, 81 yards. And that may be uh, the lengthiest drive of the season for Houston. So Ware was able to show quite a bit of patience and the spoon man did most of the damage for Houston. And they also give that offensive line a lot of credit. And off up the middle to Murray. And he gets across the 30 to about the 32 before Oglesby wraps him up. Alfred Oglesby was one of the most recruited young men out of high school four years ago, coming out of Weimar, Texas. And he has really grown into an excellent defensive lineman, and many of the pro scouts like him a lot in the first couple of rounds this year. Reggie Miller now, and Anderson, and that's Miller in motion. Gable looking for Anderson, and it's incomplete at about the 40-yard line. Good coverage, too, Bill. Price really did. Yeah. He closed down, didn't he? Yep. He planted his foot and came back with it. This is one thing I think that Pat Thomas could do. Could do so, so well. So he ought to be able to teach it. Yeah, and he does a good job there as he just gets a hand in. And you notice also Chris Ellison right there to help him out. Cornelius Price already with three interceptions this year. And boy, there's Henry LeBlanc. They said he would be back today. I don't know who told us that, but that's not the right information. Doesn't look like he's ready to play. Here comes Blitz Houston, and Gable has to throw it away. Oh, my goodness. Eric Blunt, number 42, was in there along with Darwin Warren. And they came untouched. Well, the center had to pick one. That left Blunt wide open, didn't it? Yeah, he can't, he can't get two. He can only get to one. Mark Bass, the center for Baylor, picked up. I believe it was Trey Hooper and Rudder with another excellent punt. He has been dynamite today. Weatherspoon still has room to run and he's going to shift inside and he's brought down at about the 28 yard line. Good open field tackle by Garrett Long. That's great, great sign when a running back can return punts. The coach is telling us this week that Weatherspoon not only being an excellent athlete has great acceleration but he probably has as good of eyesight as anybody on the team as you take a look at the senior from Hearn Texas Yarrick Long who made the play excellent play by Long but that Weatherspoon probably has the best peripheral vision of anybody on the Houston team you got to have great eyes to be able to feel the punt Tracy Good Patrick Cooper, Paul Smith in the lineup for Houston. Four wide receivers. That's good in motion. First and ten for Andre Ware. 9.54 left to play in the game. And there it is. Has it wide open to the 45-yard line. Good Gary run. Joe Kinney on the tackle. Been right in the middle of the zone. Now, Bum, we've seen Baylor react, and now Houston's reacting offensively. Yeah. Well, they zoned him that time, and they kid recognized the zone, got right in the middle of it, there's nobody to cover it. Hazard has three catches today for 45 yards. So that gives him 36 catches on the season, and again, it's Kimball Anders, keeps his balance, and 
wiggles up to the 50-yard line. Robert Blackman tried to apply the tackle, but there you see the elusiveness of Kimball Anders. When Weatherspoon really emerged last year as a running back, Anders took it very well, said, hey, we can use two backs in this offense. And although it cut into his playing time a little bit, he's a good enough kid where he said, hey, we need Weatherspoon to win. And he's a big part of this team. They use them both very effectively. And now, Weatherspoon in the game, wide open at the 40-yard line was Brian Williams. Robert Blackman on the tackle, but that's three straight completions by Houston. They dropped off on him. He just gets a good quarterback. He reads what he's supposed to read. It's getting plenty of time to throw two, Bob. Yeah, that little half roll helps him. The three-man rush, you're not going to get many people out. Three first downs in a row for Houston. Where again? And he'll hit Weatherspoon inside the 30 to the 27. Another first down for Houston. Gary Joe Kinney with the tackle on C Spoon. That's the fourth catch of the game for Weatherspoon. He has gained 60 yards on those four completions. Baylor just can't guard everybody. No, no. You've got to have somebody in that quarterback space sooner or later. Well, are you saying you might come with a little blitz? Yeah, yeah, I would think they will get down here. They got their less area to cover. Baylor still with seven defensive backs in the game, and it's a draw play. Weatherspoon and a good job by Baylor picking it up. John Godfrey reacted quickly. The junior out of Dallas, South Oak Cliff. This play ate Baylor alive last year. Then it almost did here. You got a big hole that linebacker just does a good job. Yeah, Godfrey came in and made the play because it looked like that Giesler had a good block on the linebacker. And it'll be second down, nine needed for Ware and the Cougars. 8.05 left to play, Houston leading it 10-0 over Baylor. Ware looking for more, there's a flag and it's probably holding because it's in that territory. Darren Franklin made the tackle for Baylor. He's going to refuse that. If it is, I'll never refuse. He's got a loss. Good job by Franklin. Baylor that time with more pressure. That's what they're doing with, with uh, Godfrey. They're standing him up like a linebacker and then bring him late sometime. Well, there are a lot of theories about how to play Houston. If, if he has time to read four receivers, that's too much time to read, isn't it? I believe so, Billy. I I just believe you got to get somebody coming from outside. You can't. Houston line does too good a job offensively to rush him up the middle, and then he'll roll away from you. You know he's going to run away from one of the three, and not the two rushers even can get to him. I just believe you got to put somebody outside where they can come at him. Let's see what Grant Taft does now on third down, and the Cougars need 15. Manny Hazard in motion. A little screen nice play. Nice there nice nice well ago. Yep. This time Baylor ate it up. Marcus Lowe, number 95, was right there. He read it out. 6'2", 282 pounder. And there was nothing there for Weatherspoon. And Godfrey was looking for it, too. He didn't see it the time before. Gain of about two. And Roman Anderson will come in and they'll put the mark down at the 36 yard line. He already has a 47 yarder today. So this will be about 46 yards. Of course in the dome you don't have to worry about the wind. Or the elements. Anderson. Looks good. It is good. Oh boy does he have a cannon for a leg. Huh? He does. Yeah I don't believe the T bothered him in it. I like it. Lack of having the tea. I haven't noticed it anywhere in the nation. They said that taking the tee away might make it tougher, but these young guys can kick it from anywhere. A 46-yarder for Roman Anderson, and with 6.53 left to play in the first half, the Cougars increase their lead over the Bears, 13 to nothing. Baylor's got to get something going.
the run and gun in Houston Cougars. The run and shoot is operating in the second quarter. Baylor, however, has done an excellent job. Houston with only three points in the first quarter, but 10 here in the second, and Anderson will kick it off. And it'll come down to Reggie Miller right at the goal line. Miller trying to get outside, and that Houston special teams really doing a job. Number 34, Carlos Leon. That's his second special teams tackle on the day. Tommy Kaiser has done just a beautiful job with special teams at Houston. Hey, they stay right in their lane. Yeah. They will, Coach. They'll show it. So again, Baylor back on the 15-yard line. Sometimes that's the only time a youngster can play. He's got mom and pop in the stands and his girlfriend. <laughs> He wants to get that tackle. Raphael over left guard, and there's nothing but red jersey. Very good. With Ryman play. Well, there looked like some extracurricular activity. A Baylor player continued to block after the play, and a Cougar may have gotten a hand in the face mask, so let's look and see. There it is. Oops, somebody lost a helmet. And the activity is away from the pile. And we couldn't really tell. That's Chris Ellison, number 39, listening to the official. We'll listen to him, too. Live ball, face mask, 15 yard defense. We have dead ball, face mask, 15 yard defense. Well, there were two defensive calls for face masking on Houston. And one was a dead ball. No dent was after the first one. Mm -hmm. That's what made that helmet come off. And they were standing him up. In your upper right corner, yeah. there's the pushing, and there's the face mask, Ellison. So that lets Baylor out of a big hole. The Bears at the 15. They're going to be two 15-yard penalties. So it goes. It's a 30-yard penalty and affects what we're talking about here. All the way out to the 45-yard line for Baylor. That last scoring drive by Houston. Eight plays ending up in a 46-yard field goal by Roman Anderson. So the Cougars again hurting themselves with penalties. Gable going long. He's got a man. It's intercepted by Cornelius Price. Yeah. Good block. Price bringing it back to the 45, to the 40-yard line. And a flag down at the point of tackle. Elvin Raphael made the tackle for Baylor, but Cornelius Price got the interception, and I thought bummed that Reggie Miller had a step on he Price. He did. Threw the ball a little bit. Gable didn't quite get the ball to him. So as the Cougars have done all season long, they're penalized 30 yards on a play, and they get the ball right back. Now let's see what this flag is all about. Twenty-four yard interception return by Cornelius Price. Oh, that was yep. Clipping. Clipping called on Houston. First down. Well, the Cougars just continue to not worry about penalties, although it's got to hurt eventually. Look at the play. Good interception. And watch this block right here yep. by Montgomery. Mm-hmm. Good job. That is the fourth interception of the season for Cornelius Price. The Cougars lead the nation in turnover margin. The Cougars have intercepted 11 passes, recovered seven fumbles, so that's 18 turnovers created by Houston already in three and a half games. That young man right there is one whale of a cornerback. And Andre Ware doesn't have the people he wants, so he calls a timeout. Tracy Good. Go ahead, bro. It is. It's an exciting offense to watch. Look at all of those receivers down in the lower part of your screen. Oh, yeah. 
and he's going to hand it off. Yeah. Weatherspoon for about nine. Santana Dotson, a sophomore out of Yates on the tackle. But boy, the more defensive backs Grant Taft puts in, the more they hand the ball to Spoon. Well, three man fronts hard. Where? Goes to Hazard, and he's across the 30 for a first down. If you really rush your three people, you're going to get susceptible to a draw. They got five blockers on three linemen. And draws will really hurt you. So the Cougars now seem like where they weren't real patient in the first quarter, they're now taking what Baylor gives them. And they're moving the chains with this offense. First and ten. We're going to go long. He's got Hazard at the 40. Good coverage by Baylor. Robert Blackman, the veteran, came in at the last minute to really apply the pressure. The senior out of Van Bleck. He has two interceptions on the year. One of Baylor's leading tacklers with 32 tackles this year. Now watch this triple set to the left. Not over through him just a little, but I believe he'd have knocked it loose even if he wouldn't. So Robert Blackman with a big play for Baylor. And he's a big play man. Second down for the Cougars, still needing 10. Ball at the 31-yard line of Houston. Houston leading it, 13 nothing over Baylor with 5:35 left to play. Where again across the middle, Tracy Good wide open, first down. Houston gain of 15. Mike Welch on the tackle for Baylor. Tracy Good, a freshman out of Brazosport. Boy, he zipped that one in there. He sure stands good. Where it is, keep both feet still and throw that football. An option quarterback, Andre Ware out of Dickinson, Texas. And you take a look at Tracy Good, who is 5'6", 175 pounds, but Ware ran the option in high school. He has really developed into this offense. Long pass, Kim Blanders at the Baylor 22-yard line. Robert Blackman made the tackle. Split the two safeties. 25-yard game for Houston. Split the safety yep, right there. Yep. Split the two of them. They're too deep. Man underneath and too deep zone. He split them. Finding the soft spots in the Baylor defense. Andre Ware. First down. Sets and throws, and he overthrows Brian Williams. At about the 10-yard line of Baylor. Williams open just a moment. Ball overthrown. So Ware, so far on the game, 18 of 31 for 230 yards. And although you slow him down for a while, all of a sudden you look up and he's got 200-plus yards, and we're still in the first half. It's hard to stop him long. No huddle, Houston. Here comes Blitz Baylor. He's got time. He eludes one tackler, looking around, and he throws it to the short man inside the 20-yard line. And incomplete. Mike Welch did a good job of defending against Tracy Good. Baylor came with a safety blitz. They're going to have to start putting some kind of pressure on him. Because he's a good enough athlete. I still think he's got rushing outside. Not the inside. Watch it again. Here comes the blitz, Bump. Yeah. Right up the pipe. Watch Santana Dotson. He goes right over the top. Looks like he caught it to me. <laughs> in college ball, you only have to have one foot inbound. It looked like he had one in. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's third down. Houston still needing 10. Again, the blitz by Baylor over the top. Where a lose one, he's got two more to beat. It's a uh -oh. fumble. Or are they going to say he's down? He's down at about the 34-yard line. Yarrett Long and James Francis. And Francis finally got in on one. I'll tell you, it's hard to stay away from number 38 very long. I think Baylor's found the secret. Well, they did there. Both inside linebackers came. 
third inning heck of a play. Well, Anderson with a 47-46 yarder. Take a look at Francis. Now it'll be a 51-yard attempt for Roman Anderson. It's gone. Yeah. Oh my goodness! He drilled that one. I mean, like a frozen rope. <laughs> A frozen rope indeed. 47 46, and now 51 yards for Roman Anderson. Could give this center and that holder some credit, too, though. Boy, I'll say. The guy got the ball down good and got it down quick and got it on the spot. The center snap was good. The snapper, Frank Bryan, for Houston. The holder, Ken Perry, number eight. And Roman Anderson with nine points here in the first half for Houston. And Andre Ware and the Cougars have chipped in for seven more. So it's 16-0 Houston now with 351 left to play in the first half. Again, though, you see the big zero by Baylor, and that's indicative of even though the Houston offense has sputtered at times, that defense of Houston has kept it in the game. This sure has. Anderson will be kicking again Reggie Miller Trooper Taylor for Baylor down deep at the goal line there's Anderson Miller at about the one Pardee's in on it Ted Pardee you're right and Tyler Mucho sure I'm right of course you are you yeah. can see that 32 yeah. you know those linebackers <laughs> I, was, I was watching him all the way <laughs> That, what's it? that 32, pretty famous number yeah, when he's the I'll linebacker with the Rams yeah. and the Redskins. But watch him at the top part of your screen here. Yeah. He fights off a block. Yeah. yeah. Took on about two blockers. A tough youngster out of St. Thomas High School in Houston. So now Gable trying to go to work. The Baylor offense has not been able to do a thing against Houston so far. Looking for the screen play. It's not there. Great job of reading it by Tyrone Jones. He is a senior out of Tyler, Texas, and one of the leaders on the Houston team and also on the honor roll at, H at Houston. So he does it all. He does it in the classroom as well as on the football field. Matt got out a little too far, though. He's supposed to stay behind that offensive tackle, and Jones couldn't have got to him. Gable so far has thrown for only 32 yards. He is 6 of 16, and that Jones has been everywhere. He's awfully quick for a linebacker. He really could play a good, strong safety in the pros, I think. A lot of quickness. Rush it. Oh, humble by Gable. Who's got the football? Houston has it. Trey Hooper on the bottom of the pile. Number 94 out of Mineral Wells. Along with Darren Warren. Well, let's see again. Let's see who makes the hit. I think it's Hooper. Nope, Beasy from the backside. And you said that before the game. I tell you, it's a little easier to play over that quarterback can't see you. This is what you're talking about. You don't about. dodge you. Mm -hmm. You get some good licks. You got good quick. And almost everybody does. Put their quickest defensive rushers on the left side. On the right defensive side. I mean. That is the eighth sack of the season for Craig Beasy, the senior out of Clear Lake. And truly one of the remarkable defensive players on this Houston team. But that BZ Oglesby Hooper and Warren, that is a tough load across the front four for Houston. They play well together, too. Again, the number one team in turnover ratio has created two turnovers in the first half. That's 19 turnovers in the first three and a half games for Houston. Ware has it inside the 10. Here comes that Baylor blitz one more time. Ware looking. He's got plenty of time. He throws the Hazard. Touchdown. Emmanuel Hazard. They're not really blitzing, Bill. They're just sending two linebackers. That's just five-man rush, but they're all rushing up the middle. And he gets outside. You can't force him. He'll get outside on you. Well, the Houston Cougar students love it. Emmanuel Hazard. 
Now on the day, six catches for 72 yards and a touchdown. 39 catches on the season for the leading receiver in the NCAA. Good job by Ware. Just can't expect to chase a guy like that all day. Nope. Frankie Doesn't Smith do. tried, couldn't do it. I like the offensive receiver side of it. So it looks like they're going to go for two. With 2.53 left, leading at 22 to nothing. Cougar's going to go for two, try to get it up to 24. That would make Baylor have to score at least four. Yeah. Ware going end zone hazard, and it hit the back of the Baylor defenseman. Malcolm Frank had his arms up. May have been intended for Paul Smith. Ware trying to get it up and over Malcolm Frank and couldn't do it. But again, let's watch it as Andre Ware Again, goes to Hazard for the touchdown. Look at that offensive line for Houston. They picked everybody up, did an excellent job. I'll tell you, Bob Young has done a super job with that Houston offensive line. Jessup, Holly, Forsyth, Geisler, and Baines, and Hazard with six catches in this game and a touchdown. 39 catches and six TDs on the season. So that number 20, the warehouse. I like that. <laughs> Yeah. The Oilers call it the house of pain. <laughs> the Cougars call it the house of gain. <laughs> well, it's the warehouse, all right, and there's a lot going on inside the warehouse. Andre is now 19 of 33 for 238 yards. He does seem to feel good, doesn't he? He does. I mean, he's standing back there, and he can pick them out. If you get somebody open, he's going to find it. Now they... Yeah, Grant Taft and F.A. Dreyer saying, well, what are we going to do here with time running out, 2.53 left to play in the first half. Baylor has not been able to generate much offense at all. Roman Anderson will kick it off short. Trooper Taylor does a good job of twisting over the 25 to about the 27. Trooper Taylor out of Quero, Texas. Kirk Russell and Lewis on the tackle for Houston. Well, that's not much of a drive, is nope. it? Nope. I like those kind of drives. You almost give it to the defense, don't you? <laughs> you have to give them credit, yeah. DC with creating the... You know what? Uh, he, With Houston being on probation, not having live television, I guess Ware won't get the publicity that a lot of the other players will get, but you have to consider him for that Heisman right now as Murray goes wide, and there's just nothing there. Look at that Houston defense. The Cedric Calloway and Alton Montgomery stretching it out. Total offense, look at that. Houston, 240 yards. Baylor with only 54 yards, and that Houston defense continues to stifle the opponent. Lamar Lathan, of course, the All-American middle linebacker for Houston, out for the season. But they really haven't missed a beat. Rush, uh, sack, fumble. Oh, Houston oh, has it at the 20-yard line. Fred Beasy on the recovery. They have really took them apart defensively. Trey Hooper made the initial hit, and Beasy was the man on the spot. Watch it again. There's Oglesby with pressure. Here's Hooper, boom, from the backside, and Beasy right there for the recovery. Gable's got to be getting a little gunshot. Oh, yeah. I don't think he will. I think he'll survive it. Good quarterbacks do. Trey Hooper out of Mineral Wells. And he's the youngster of this group. There's Craig Beasy, one of the oldsters of the group. The veterans. First down now for Ware. The defense giving him another chance to score. Hazard goes high at the five. Mike Welch defending for Baylor. Still, we have 2-0-1 remaining in the second quarter. Ware now 19 of 34 
on the game. Three turnovers created by the Houston defense. Kimball Anders, the lone back behind Ware. Looks back to the right side. He's got good open, but he fell down at the 15-yard line. Had the ball been thrown down a little lower, he would have had some running room on the play. Tracy Good not expecting to see a lot of action in this game. He's been playing with a bruised shoulder this week in practice. Brant Taft, look at that look on his face. That tells the whole story. He's mm -hmm. a little concerned, isn't he? Mm -hmm. he got another half to play. Third down, the Cougars need to get at the 10-yard line of Baylor. Andre Ware trying to avoid the rush, looks into the end zone. He has a man, touchdown Houston. Emmanuel Hazard with his second TD of the game. You think that wasn't a good pass? Running to his right and throw it back across his body. I tell you, what a fun. Perfect. Yeah, what, what a perfect. What a fun team to watch, huh? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I believe every bit this young man ought to be in the Heisman race. I don't know who's better, do you? I don't either. I haven't seen anybody throw it. He throws a lot like Warren Moon. I think Warren Moon's a great quarterback. That's a good comparison. I, really right. do. I think he throws a lot like Warren. Roman Anderson will go for the extra point. He hasn't missed a thing today. He's perfect three of three for field goals, two of two for extra points. Watch it again, Bum. He does a good job of buying himself time. Oh, yeah. That's what makes him valuable. And he has great vision. Mm -hmm. That's, that's tough. Throw one way and throw the other way and see him even is tough. And he's got Baylor strung out all over the field. Andre Ware now is 21 of 36, 258 mm -hmm. yards and two touchdowns. And Houston with a 29 to nothing lead with 1.23 to play. The Cougars have scored 26 points in the second quarter. You got the quarters mixed up. They usually score 26 in the first quarter. I think it took him some time. Yeah. And he's also a cheerleader. <laughs> That's fun playing. That kid does. He enjoys it. look at his face. Going into this season, of course, the Cougars played their first game out in Las Vegas. So they didn't get the scores to the East Coast. Their next win over Arizona State also didn't get any scores to the East Coast. So a lot of people weren't aware of Andre Ware the first couple of games. They are now. I would say so. That's why the Cougars like to play at 4 o'clock. Sometimes their games will last four hours with all these passes thrown. They like to get the scores in the paper. Murray got a little crease, fell down at the 30-yard line. Really brought down on his own. Jamie Mouton tripped him up, but Andre Ware, touchdown pass to Emmanuel Hazard. Two touchdown passes for both Ware and Hazard on the day. And two turnovers from both of them. Easy touchdowns. Both oh, turnovers did the trick. You're right. Cougars hurting, though, uh, in the ranks of receivers with Berlin Brown out for the season. We don't know the status of Henry LeBlanc. He is out for today's game. Gable rolls left. Nice pass. Yep. 42 yard line, gain of 12. First down, Baylor. Chris Ellison covering for Houston. David Frost made the reception. A junior out of Edmond, Oklahoma. So Baylor now trying to get on the board with time running out in the first half. 107 left to play. The stats on Brad Gable, he has been harassed the entire game. He really hasn't had a lot of time to look for anybody. Good job of coming out to his back, Jeffrey Murray. Cost him. That cost him. He's taken down out of bounds. The same pattern, they just turned it over the other way. Same pass pattern. Hey, that Murray is a load at 217 pounds. He's out of Sterling High School here in Houston. In fact, Murray played in the same backfield with Jason Phillips when Phillips played at Sterling High School before coming to the Cougars. The penalty will be on Houston. And I'll tell you what, this is uncalled for here. Mm -hmm. That play is over. You can't keep 
continuing to do that, and I think the coaches will say something to Alton Montgomery about it. Oh, thank you, man. There he is out of that. Well, you know, Murray had his face mask. <laughs> <laughs> so Montgomery may not have had a chance to get away from him anyway. Boys will be boys. Penalty. Don't have to be the James boys, though. <laughs> That's right. 85 yard penalties, Houston. And reception is good to the Houston 30 yard line by Baylor. Murray did a good job of getting out of bounds to stop the clock with 55 seconds left to play. The Cougar band getting ready for halftime and we'll join them. It's like the Blues Brothers. And there is Henry LeBlanc. Gable rushed here. Fumble. Houston has it. Craig Vesey gets his second fumble at the 35-yard line. Darwin Warren applied the pressure on Gable. That is the fourth Houston turnover in the game. Hit him when he didn't see him again. Oh, boy, what a hit. Watch Warren come around number 97. You know, Bum, you really don't have a chance to look for a secondary receiver with Houston. No. Oh, what a lick. Look how fast. You know, he's 260 pounds. He closed in a hurry. Now with 48 seconds left, Houston could still do it. Could do it. Baylor with four turnovers in the game. The Cougars leading the nation in turnover margin. And they'll have that lead. Play action. Where? And he throws it away. It's going to be a metal screen again. Yeah, he didn't. There's Craig Busy. Yeah, you tell him, Craig. You know, Jack Pardee says he's never had any trouble. There's Darren Warren. He's never had any trouble with getting these kids ready to play. He says he doesn't worry about whether they're ready to play or not. They have come with a purpose this year because, of course, they're ineligible to go to a bowl game on probation and eligible for live TV, but he said there's nothing. They like they to play can... football. That's right. You know, they like to play. Why not go 11-0? Well, no, we're not going to rush at all. There's not one man. There are two rushers for Baylor. Cooper and outside. Still completed to Patrick Cooper at Baylor Territory 49-yard line. A gain of 16 on the play and a Houston first down. You know what he did on that last play? Rather than throw, he could have thrown it to Anders for a loss. He just threw it in the, in the ground. Yeah. Teddy quarterback. So where now is 22 of 38 for 274 yards, and he gets another one to Cooper. Stops the clock at the 41. So still 24 seconds left to play, and here goes Houston again. He's trying to get to the field goal position, I think. Cooper comes out. Brian Williams goes into the game for Houston. So Paul Smith and Tracy Good up at the top part of your screen. Williams flanked down to the lower part along with Hazard. Where? The flags all over the place. Looked like flag day, and that's obviously holding on Houston. Greg Effinger, 6'6", 255 pounder out of San Antonio Churchill, brought down where on the rush? You see the Baylor kid get up and pick up where then? Mm -hmm. that's, that's real good. I like to see people play footballers that enjoy playing. You know, Bum, with these two great gentlemen we have as head coaches, I don't you, think so. you know the kids are good. You got, you got to meet them all before the game, and these are all great kids. Mm -hmm. In fact, you wouldn't want to put your kids in any better hands than those of Jack Pardee or Grant Tapp, would not, you? Not at all. And their coaching staff. Well, you can play hard, but you just play hard during the down. You know, when it's over, it's over. It's like a game. 17 seconds left. Watch it.
Andre says, I can do anything. Charles Bell was the defensive back, and Williams had him beat by about five yards. I mean, it's outstanding high. It's like Pat Greeny used to throw to Burrow. You yeah. can see it. You can see it all the way. There's going to be a touchdown. Trips left for yeah. Houston, huh? Yep. Yeah. He just it runs to the backside of the defender. What a perfectly thrown oh, yeah. pass by you Andre could, Ware. You can tell it when it's 30 yards away, too. If he didn't drop it, it's going to be a touchdown. Well, the Cougars can score from anywhere. Andre Ware is now 24 of 40 here at the end of the first half. 333 yards, three touchdowns. The Cougars with 33 points in the second quarter and go to the locker room at the half, leading Baylor 36 to nothing. The run and shoot providing the points. The Cougar defense with an awesome display here with four turnovers in the first half. We'll be back with the Houston band in just a moment. Baylor with six first downs, the Cougars, but 333 passing. And Weatherspoon will pick right up where he left off at the five-yard line on the kickoff, and he careens his way up to about the 26-yard line. The tackle made by Lachey Mason, Mason of Dallas, Texas. It's going to be interesting now to see what adjustment Baylor's made. Well, that's uh, usually a pretty good month for a quarterback. He's already just one half. Yeah. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. You know, as much as he passes the ball, that's a stat that really jumps out at you. No interceptions. Well, he, he knows where he's throwing it, and he throws it where he's looking. Looks to the other side of the field. Now he looks back to the right. He's still got plenty of time. Finally, Baylor gets to him, but heck, he had about seven seconds to look mm -hmm. around. The other thing he did, though, he pulled it down and kept it. He didn't throw it. Robin Jones made the tackle, a 6'3", 266-pound sophomore out of Dallas Hillcrest. In fact, uh, in the first half, uh, the University of Houston was penalized more yards than Baylor gained. Mm -hmm. 95 yards of penalties for Houston, 72 yards gain for Baylor. Second down for Andre Ware and the Cougars. He'll take that 30 second clock right down. It's down to one before it was snapped. So he used 29 seconds to get the playoff yeah. intercepted by Baylor Robert Blackman. Blackman looking for a wall. He's got it. 10. And he's tackled at about the eight-yard line by Andre Ware. First time they brushed him from the outside. Now we're seeing the all-American ability of one of the best ones out there, Robert Blackman. Tremendous amount of pride and talent. First time they've rushed him from the outside, though, Bill. That's a good point, Bob. Put a little pressure on him from out there so he couldn't turn. Didn't Blackman do an excellent job, though, of breaking to that ball? Mm -hmm. So now the Baylor offense with a chance to get on the board. First down and goal for the Bears. Option. Oh, my goodness. Reggie Burnett. 6'3", 235. He played super back when Jack Pardee came here, and Pardee says, I want you as a linebacker. He's playing super backer now. <laughs> what a hit. Oh, boy. I like him. He wears those high-top black shoes. You don't see like that Carl anymore. Mark, yeah. Yeah, one of your favorites, huh? Who is that? Second down now for the Bears. Gable looking down yeah. to the third. And he's got him at the three-yard line. Reggie Miller, nice play by Miller. Cedric Calloway had the coverage. Gable did a good job of waiting for Miller to get open. Rolling away from that rush. Mm -hmm. He got it to him a step or two quicker. He could have scored. He could have turned up the field. 
So for Baylor, it'll be third down and goal to go. The Bears at about the three and a half yard line of Houston. Play action, man wide open, Stutzman touchdown. Steve Stutzman, a big tight end who had a 65 yard touchdown pass last week against Texas Tech, and he gets on the board against this week. And boy, is he a good one, 6'4", 225 pounder out of Dangerfield. Nice play by Baylor. Dutzman on the reception, Ireland. Jeff Ireland with the extra point, it's perfect. Ireland, uh, a perfect nine for nine this season for extra points. Again, Bum, what did he do here? He, there wasn't anybody near the receiver. No, the play action food safety about it had to tie it in, evidently. He's looking in the backfield. You couldn't see it on the film, but he's looking in the backfield when the back faked the other way. He went that way and tied in, just slow block and come out. Pretty good play there by the Bears. So quickly a turnover by Baylor. Yeah. Well, I don't believe Baylor's going to give up now. Too well coached. No Too many not. good football players. Yep. Baylor ran into a couple of buzz saws early in Oklahoma and Georgia. And the Bears were able to right themselves. They played good against the Tech. They really played well. They played well defensively and offensively both. In fact, they took a bunch of turnovers away from Tech. That's how they won that ball game. And they did something with them after they got them. They covered kickoffs real well against Texas Tech. They've covered here today. Ireland kicking it off real Yay. high. Butcher. Somebody better get under it in a hurry. And it's Kimball Anders. He runs out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. Garrett Long carried him out of bounds. Brad Gable saying, well, had a little better idea on that play. So the Bears took it the eight necessary yards to get on the scoreboard. It's now 36-7. And the Baylor defense, much like the Houston defense, created that for the offense with the turnover. That lift, give them a big lift, too, you know. They needed to do something good, and they did. Looks like the Cougars have a little problem on who they're going to substitute for, and now it looks like they only have 10 players out there. Tim Woods come into the game. I think he did. Number 33, inside lateral. That's actually a pass to Anders, and he's thrown out of bounds on the play by James Francis. Jack Curtis is the one that invented that play. Utah pass. Jack Curtis is the first one that invented it. First one that I saw running. And it's really a pretty safe no, play, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, you, you might have an incomplete pass. I don't think he'd lateral that. I think he'd. That's a forward pass. That's what it was intended to be. I know, and it actually was pretty close, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Second down, needing about seven for Ware. A lot of pressure. Hazard, 45. Midfield, running away from Baylor, and he's tackled at the Baylor 48-yard line. Charles Bell made the tackle on a manual hazard, but he almost got three for the whole ball of wax. Well, he is dynamite waiting to happen. He got poked in the eye, it looked like. So rushing him from the outside is not necessarily the answer. <laughs> <laughs> he just has so you many You got to be close to him when you rush him like that. When you blitz him, you got to be close to him. Ooh. So now in the Baylor territory for Andre Ware. Across the middle again. Tough completion. Good for a gain of 12 to Cody Smith, the young junior, junior out of New Braunfels, who was a quarterback in high school. Gary Joe Kinney made the reception, or made the tackle, I should say. Cody Smith with the reception. There's Tom Wilson, the Cougar trainer for so many years, working over Hazard. Trainer of the year for many, many seasons. He is Houston. He really he is. is Houston. Tom Wilson has been here for Seems like forever. Again, Cody Smith. 
He's a tough little guy. Works on a lot of the scout teams during the week, but with all the rash of injuries to the wide receivers for Houston, he got more playing time today than he thought he would get. Yeah, how bad would it be if they had that middle linebacker and, and Brown, too, the wide receiver they lost? Oh, my goodness. Well, Jack Pardee said our defense is good, but with Lathan, Lathan in the middle, it's super. <laughs> there may not be a better defense anywhere well, with Lathan. You know, he's... Oh, wait, this is over. Second down, needs about six. Very yeah. patient. There's that little kid, Smith, again, and he's inside the 15 to the 14. Cody Smith, three receptions in a row. Blackman made the tackle. Lathan would probably go in the first five players picked in the NFL draft, so we have good yet. Well, look at this little kid now, oh, Cody yeah. Smith. Yeah. I think he was a walk-on when he first came to Houston. Boy, he put his eyes right on that ball. You can see it looking at his head. He looked it all the way in. Boy, he's tough. Five, seven hundred and seventy-eight pounds. He don't know he's not big. He's big where it counts. Where? Ooh, what a rush by Baylor at about the 20-yard line. Gary Joe Kinney. He was along with Frankie Smith coming from his right corner position. Well, that Kenny's a football player. Yeah. Senior out of Mesquite. I tell you, quarterback, though, does a great job of protecting that football. He don't throw any away. He does not make a mistake there. Ware going to the end zone. He's got Hazard wide open. In fact, it looked like he'd come out early for practice. <laughs> oh, man, there wasn't anybody around him, but Ware had a big rush put on him by Baylor, and sure that did. forced him to throw early. Couldn't quite get his feet set that time. Ware is now 29 of 47 for 392 yards. Third down. And Houston has to get to the Baylor four-yard line for a first down. Trip left. Gotta throw that screen. screen, play screen. screen. Weatherspoon, 10, Drop. 5, 4, oh, 3, man. touchdown! Unbelievable! <laughs> Great, great play, wasn't it? <laughs> well, we've talked about Robert Newhouse. That looked like Charlie Toller, the yeah. old oiler. Oh, yeah. We, it may be redundant to call him a bowling ball, but what else can you call him? Look a shot put. One. Yeah, look at this. There's one. Two, three, four. Drug him in the end zone. Well, excuse me. A gain of 22 yards and another touchdown, and Blackman is down on the field, and, boy, we hope he's okay. Star performer for the Bears and All-American candidate Robert Blackman. But this young, there he is. It's a lot of traffic, and, boy, when he met Weatherspoon, there was a massive collision. Four I don't know, Bum. Weatherspoon at 5'7", 215, where do you grab him? I don't know. You can't huh? grab him, you know. You can't grab him very any spot. If you grab him straight ahead, you get him right around the head. All right, let's watch Weatherspoon and Blackman again. Here it is. Yeah. Oh. oh. He just bounced right off, mm -hmm. kept his feet moving. Got his shoulder down. That's something I want to be sure and point out. Don't tell kids to duck your head, duck your shoulder, not your head. You get your neck broke ducking your head. Keep that head up and try to put that head right on him, huh? Put the shoulder, but you put you lower your shoulder, not your head when you're running with the ball. So Roman Anderson again will be kicking. I mean, black ones all right though. Looks like he's okay. I might have hurt his shoulder a little bit, also knocked the wind out of him. Oop. There came the middle rush by special teams. Now remember, you can return a block kick for two mm. points the other way, so you got to jump on it in a hurry. Well, it's been too much spoon. 
guess he's spoon feeding the Bears right now. Houston 42, Baylor 7 with 10.42 left to play in the third quarter. Baylor comes right out, forces a turnover, gets a touchdown, and the Cougars come right back down the field again to score. So it's 42-7, and Chuck Weatherspoon having himself some kind of a day. He has caught five passes for 94 yards, and he has rushed the football four times for 14 yards. But when you look about all-purpose run, and that's running, catching passes, returning punts and kickoffs, mm -hmm. he does all four. Yeah. Very seldom find a running back that good that can do all those things. He's really an outstanding player. Roman Anderson will be kicking it off again for Baylor. Trooper Taylor at about the seven yard line. And again, the special teams of Houston stop him at the 20. Carlos Leon on the tackle for Houston. All right, watch it from ground level here. And it gives you an idea of what it would be like Looks to like meet this young man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Acceleration. He's got the vision. Now he knows he's just got to come right back. Welch couldn't arm tackle him. Mm -mm. Good gracious. <laughs> I just don't know where I put the helmet on that guy. Eight plays, 74 yards, and only 222. That's the one thing about that offense for Houston. Gable downfield, tipped up in the air. Oh, intercepted by Halton Montgomery. Actually, Cornelius Price got the hand in the face of the Baylor receiver, and Montgomery, I think, wanted to run with it before he got it. Watch Price, number 21, again. Yeah, and it hit Anderson right on the helmet. Mm. And Darren Warren was shaken up on the play, and that's bad news for Houston. Jack Pardee said before this season started that he thought he had as good of players as anybody. He just didn't know how many bodies he had. He couldn't afford a lot of injuries. Now, there we see the Baylor defense with Pete Friedenberg. Baylor with Raphael and Murray in the backfield. Gable has had to go, of course, to the air, being behind so much. He's cornered. Nice pass play to Murray. And he's up across the 40-yard line, run out of bounds about the 40 by Tyrone Jones. And I'll tell you, this is really a great target. I think they're going to bring it back, however. Baylor may have been guilty of holding. But Murray came into the game with 19 catches. And at about 220 pounds, he's pretty tough to bring down. There it is, Murray. Russ didn't hold him real good. He got by him. Left him open to catch the pass, but the holding had already occurred. Offense. Boy, he put a hit on Jones, didn't he? Mm -hmm. How would you like to see Murray and Weatherspoon in the same backfield? I don't know if I'd like that. <laughs> Well, I've seen Coleman most today. Grant Taft was worried about this game coming in. He said, well, we just don't know how good Houston is. We see the numbers. They look awesome. We'll have to find out. Here's that option play to Raphael right side, and Tyrone Jones wrapped him up. Jones. And they're strong safe to blitz from the other side. Really, there are just not a lot of weapons that Gable can use right now. That It seems like Houston's playing with about 13 players. That's Better count them, because they just look like it. Raphael, the leading rusher for Baylor coming into the game. 
averaging almost five yards per carry. Today, he has rushed 10 times for only six yards. Tyrone Jones, one of the honor students, also for that Houston Cougar team. Gable now will roll to his left. Oh, Not so far look far. out. Pressure by Houston. He's down at the four-yard line. First, it was Burnett, Craig Vesey, Trey Hooper. They were all over it. And Gable just had nowhere to go. Listen to the Cougar fans. They appreciate their defense. All right, watch the back foot of Rudder. He's right near that back line. He's got an excellent leg, and he gets the punt out. However, this one's going to be short, and Houston will let it hit, and it goes out of bounds at the Baylor. 37-yard line. That's eight punts now for Rudder. That one traveled 33 yards. Well, Jack Pardee, I was talking about, you know, late in the games, I said, Jack, who do you play? He says, I don't have a lot to play because we're trying to redshirt as many people as possible <laughs> because of... And then look out for some big scores then. And he just doesn't have a lot of people to put into the game in the late stages. Total offensive figures. Houston leading the nation, of course, in total offense. The Cougars came into this game averaging 658 yards a game. Right now, over 400. Cody Smith in motion. There's that pass play inside to Anders, and going to be a holding call, I think, on Houston. James Francis on the tackle. I'll tell you, that Francis, when I did Southwest Conference basketball two years ago, he was the starting power forward for the Baylor Bears and one of the leading scorers. Hmm. And finally, he said, well, I don't think basketball is my sport. So he went to spring football practice the next year, bum, and went ahead and beefed up about 25 pounds. Hmm. But he is some kind good of good athlete. athlete. Oh, yeah. Go, 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 go. So holding is called on Houston. And they'll back it up 10 yards. So the ball will be just shy of the Baylor 45-yard line. Craig Alexander into the game at the top part of your screen. Cody Smith in motion. Blitz, Baylor. Going to throw it outside to Hazard. He's not blocking. Look out. 30. He's at the 20. Cuts around. Could go. He's got a blocker. 10-5. Touchdown, Houston. No flag. Oh my goodness, what a read by Andre Ware on the blitz by Baylor. What a great job of getting that ball to him. 45 yards on the pass and run, Ware to Emmanuel Hazard. Bum, here comes the blitz. Mm -hmm. Yep, coming from the outside too. Looked like a good block too by Mike Holly for Houston. That put good coverage on him, they just slipped the tackle. Now look Did at this guy. a great guy. job of running. In the open field. Yeah, huh? oh yeah. Roman Anderson with the extra point. And my goodness gracious, the Cougars now lead it 48 to 7. Well, he has just tied the Southwest Conference record for career touchdown passes held by Kevin Murray of the Aggies. And he's got another season and a half to go. <laughs> and another quarter and a half here. We'll take a break. Houston leading it 49 to 7. The warehouse.
time at the warehouse. <laughs> I guess so. You know, that young man, Andre Ware, as I said, recruited by Bill Yeoman as an option quarterback. In fact, he wanted to go to Texas. He had grown up at Dickinson watching Don Donnie Little. And Little went to Texas, and Ware said, that's where I want to go. The only problem was Texas wanted him to play defensive back. <laughs> so he came to Houston and switched to the run and shoot and never missed a beat. That would have been a terrible waste, wouldn't it? Oh, my goodness. Now he has tied the conference career mark, 48 touchdown passes held by Kevin Murray, and he really has a season and a half left. Reggie Miller gets it to about the 25. The amazing thing, too, Bum, uh, Zach Chapman, along with Tyler Mucho on the tackle for Houston, the amazing thing is that Ware only started three games last year, so he really is a relative newcomer to this offense, although he has a spring practice under his belt. Just think what numbers he could roll up mm. in the future. Boggles the mind. Oh, yeah. To change quarterbacks. Nope, it looks like Gable's still in there. Really? They're going to hand it off now to Raphael. Good one as he cuts back to the 35, 40. And he's out across the 40 to the 42. Alton Montgomery brings him down. Nice run by Elwin Raphael. You can't hold a good one down very long, and he's one of the best. Junior out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Good cutback. Yeah. That's the good part about that eye. You're deep enough you can see that. Good Hadn't got enough time to get there. Good block by Monty Jones, the right guard. Watch him number 59 on the upper part of your screen. First down and 10, Baylor. Gable, little screen pass out to Raphael. Uh -oh. Well, that didn't fool anybody. Darren Warren apparently is okay. He was the first one over there along with Reggie Burnett. Well, Raphael came into the game averaging, as we told you, about five yards a carry at 348 yards on the season. And Grant Taft was worried. He said, you know, you, you do talk about that Houston offense so much, you forget about the defense. You don't have to tell a coach, though. He knows those things. He knew about that defense. Gable. Oh, Intercepted. Really? It is. Believe it. Cornelius Price with the fifth Houston turnover of the game. And for Price, his fifth interception on the season. Hey, what I he looks like he's playing the NFL right now. The way he closes to the <laughs> ball. I had read the quarterback real well, too. Does he get it, Bob? I think he did. I think he did. What a great job of coverage by Cornelius Price, Jr. out of Dallas Carter. And the officials evidently think he did. And that's all that counts. Mm -hmm. Two interceptions in the game for Price. Ware going long. Oh, it. Paul Smith. And Welch put a hit on him at the five-yard line. <laughs> I think you could call it a hit, too. Welch and Malcolm Frank had Smith sandwiched at the goal line. Now, this is what a receiver some Watch Welch. Yeah. Oop. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what, Welch says, hey, don't come down here anymore on me. I'm tired of this stuff. Kind of don't blame him, do you? <laughs> you no, know, they don't bother those University of Houston receivers. I don't think. <laughs> they got ice water. You get the glory when you catch a touchdown pass. You got to expect that if it's over your head. You better have all your eyes open. Weatherspoon. Mm -hmm. And he got turned over by Malcolm Frank. First time I've seen him run that play. Don't. Well, a lot of frustration on Baylor's part right now, and I, you can't blame them. They have run into a buzzsaw in Houston. Can't 
kids need to work on poise, though. That's something you have to have if you're going to win the big games. You've got to keep your poise. The best thing to do is control it all the time. 6.30 left to play in the third quarter, and it's 49-7 Houston. Where? About Rose, 56. He's got Hazard wide yeah. open. 56. 10. 5. <laughs> Touchdown. Houston. Houston scoring machine just keeps coming. Now watch him there. Bum the three left again. How's he get this wide open here? Evidently the inside man had him and he outran him. Inside man checked off. They just switched receivers and that's what's bad about man to man. One of them switches and the other one doesn't. And that's what happened. Okay, I don't believe you can take college kids and switch defensive people. That's I mean, offensive people. Four touchdowns now. That's the same thing he did a while ago. Four touchdowns for Hazard. He may be calling home. He called in the NFL. <laughs> you can't say that. Oh, okay. He's not calling in. Okay. <laughs> He's okay. calling home. Uh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, Jason Phillips is with the Detroit Lions right now, and of course that's Mouse Davis in the run and shoot. James Dixon's, who was with Houston last year, is with the Dallas Cowboys. Hazard's got another year. Well, that touchdown pass by Ware breaks the record. He now has 49 career touchdown passes. That passes Kevin Murray. He is number one in the great tradition of the Southwest Conference. He is the leader and he has a full season and a half left to play. And heaven forbid barring any injury. But he's going to set some records that are going to be hard to break. <laughs> this offense bum can you prepare for it in just a short week of work well that's kind of like when the people came out with a wishbone you know it was completely different than anything you'd ever seen and it made it awful hard in five days to get your kids to recognize stuff and you better recognize this or it's a touchdown it's like that they didn't switch one of them switched and the other one didn't cannot do that that's just a simple kind of an X pattern. Yeah, but but the two people, the two defensive people, are supposed to switch. When the guy breaks inside, the inside man took him, but the outside man didn't wait for Hazard. He came on with the inside man. He didn't switch. All right, again, a, again, a look from the defensive end of it. Yeah, see, they're playing man on him. The outside guy didn't switch. The inside guy did. So Hazard, so far in the game, Ware is now 32 of 51 for 480 yards. Hazard has nine receptions for 173 yards and four touchdowns. The leading receiver, I think it's safe to say, will still be the leading receiver after this game. Grant mm -hmm. Taft says, what did I run into here? Montana and Rice? Look at that look. Mm. I've been there. It's no fun. <laughs> no, no, it is. <laughs> no. What are you wondering? Where'd all them Indians come from? <laughs> well, I'll be, I'll tell you. First time I have seen the Cougars live this season, I'm a believer. This is one of the most awesome attacks, both offensively and defensively, anywhere in football. They really have. They really played well defensively as well as offensively. Well, the stats today for Andre Ware, 32 of 51 for 500 yards, five TDs, and one interception. Trooper Taylor drops the ball back at the 17, and he's leveled at about the 32. 
Dude, what a tackle. Carlos Leon and also Zach Chapman. I'll tell you that Leon is a heck of a special teams player. And we've got a Cougar down on the field, one of the special teams players down at about the 38. The house of game. Mm -hmm. That is Henry Lewis, a defensive end out of Atlanta. I think Baylor now is going to go to their senior Ed Lovell out of Lamarck. Lovell came in last year to start three games for Baylor when Gable was hurt. Also in the backfield for the Bears. There's Lovell. Will be Lincoln Coleman and Eric Gilstrap. And in motion goes David Frost. Strap or a Coleman, I should say, running it down to Trey Hooper making the tackle at about the 35 yard line of the Bears. Well, let's take a look at the Houston defense, has allowed under two yards per play by Baylor. That is an awesome display. The average per play by the Baylor Bears under two yards a snap. And it's outstanding. Level. Rolling right. Ball in the air intercepted. Houston. Cornelius Price with his third interception today, his sixth on the season. I'm telling you what, everywhere that youngster is, that's where the football is. You know, it is an outstanding stat. Ben Baylor was averaging 5.3 yep. prior to this game, and they played some good football teams. Somebody got a hand on it. I couldn't see exactly who it was. It was a Baylor hey. man. The Baylor man got the hand on it, and Price was right there, taken out of bounds by Reggie Miller. Seven turnovers now, I think, by Houston in this game. Houston came in number one in the nation with 17 turnovers. There it is. Six, three interceptions by Cornelius Price alone. That's about the only running play Houston has. I think Jack's trying not to put the ball in the air, but I guess he could turn and just hand it to his running back. He does have that dive play. Is that in the draw? Yeah, our draw play. But when you pass almost every down, Pretty hard not to do it. Going to be holding on Houston. Andre Ware today, 500 yards, 32 of 51, five touchdowns. You might ought to refuse the penalty. Now you're going to touchdowns. force him to throw it. I'll tell you what. Now he set the record seven touchdown passes last week. He could break it here again today. Because we've still got 5-12 to play in the third quarter. We've still got a quarter to play. You see why Houston moved their games to 4 o'clock, don't you? You're going to call my mom and tell her I'm going to be late. <laughs> you can bring a box lunch when you come to a Houston game because you're usually going to be there about three or four hours. Easy. Where to Weatherspoon? Couldn't hold it. Records so far set against Baylor today. The 33 passes completed is a record against the Baylor Bears. Mike Ford of SMU held that record. He set it back in 1978 when he completed 32 passes. Six touchdown passes against Baylor to ties a record Robbie Bosco set of BYU back in 1984. Where on the screenplay? Weatherspoon with lots of running room. 
Oh, he hurdles a man at the 40, changes direction. He's still on his feet. And he's at the 33-yard line. He didn't know he was supposed to go down, did he? I don't think he knows he's supposed to be tackled, and the crowd is yelling, Spoon. Well, watch these moves. Mm -hmm. That's balance for you, isn't it? That's an old football drill that you've had for years. Oh, yeah. Keep your yeah. balance. C spoon run, C spoon score. What did you say a moment ago? <laughs> He's a tablespoon. Yeah, he is a teaspoon. <laughs> That's it for Andre Ware. He checks out of the game to a standing ovation. 33 of 53 for 514 yards and six touchdowns for Andre Ware today. I believe I'd get him out of the game myself. Boy, you not. Maybe a touchdown or two before. David Klinger, a sophomore out of Stratford High School, is the new quarterback. This kid's got a good arm. You know, he started, he only had three points on the board after the first quarter. Yeah. The Warehouse. Houston's new name for the dome, the warehouse. He's going to stack a lot of records in this warehouse before he's gone. So it'll be Klinger at the controls. And David has put up some pretty impressive numbers this season himself. There is what he has done so far this year. Hey, that's not bad. No, it is. He got a good arm. Good arm. Gonna run the option to Weatherspoon, and he's oh, he's down at the 31, and he might have the first down. Malcolm Frank and Weatherspoon had a, a large collision at the 31-yard line. Hey, I'd almost get him out of the game too. First rushing first down for Houston. First down, Houston. Ball at the Baylor 31 yard line. Klinger will throw back to the other side to Hazard, and he's tackled just inside the 30. Nice play by Frankie Smith. And there's another flag, believe it or not. Oh, I believe it. Back at the 20 yard line. Pass defense, I guess. Referees get about as much a workout as the players. Holding. Defense. 10 yard penalty and first down. The rains are poured. Watch the numbers here on Emmanuel Hazard. 183 yards. He was recruited by BYU and a lot of the Pac-10 schools on the West Coast, but he came down for a visit last year to Houston, and he said he got along very well with Andre Ware. I can certainly hmm. see why, because he and Ware now have combined so far this year for some huge numbers. So there's a penalty. It was defensive holding called on Baylor. The ball will be at the 20 yard line. That'll be first down Houston. And we still have 335 left to play in the third quarter. You know, if, if you were Baylor, I'd like to find that clock operator and find a way to short circuit that clock so you could get out of here. David Klinger throws it back to Hazard. And Baylor did a good job of closing mm -hmm. it down. Gary Hayes, the backup middle linebacker, a senior out of Klein High School here in Houston. In fact, Hayes went to school with Mike Holly, Byron Forsyth, 
and Joey Baines, the offensive lineman for Houston. They all went to Klein at the same time. I bet Klein won then. They won a lot of games. Yeah, I bet they did. Okay. Tell you what, we uh, met those youngsters before the game. That Baines and Forsythe, they're huge, aren't mm -hmm. they? Forsythe about 270, Baines about 281. Across the middle, and he was throwing it for Cody Smith, but Smith never turned around. Mike Welch was right with him. Now see what this does late in the game. You've got your reserves in the game, but every incomplete pass stops the clock. So with mm -hmm. 2.28 to play, games go on forever. Do you want a cup of coffee? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you know. Oh, Bill. <laughs> So I, I caught you nodding yeah. over there. I want, I want you to stay up with me. <laughs> I'd be a lot better off if I could see those numbers out there. Now, think about it. This game would have started at 7.30, Coach. Uh-oh. And people are seeing it on a delay tonight on HSE. So right now, it's past midnight. Yes. Greg uh, Effinger on the tackle for Baylor. Junior out of San Antonio Churchill. Well, the Cougars, they're going to skyrocket their records even one more notch as they head in to play Texas A&M next week at College Station. The Aggies appeared to have a safe lead over Texas Tech this afternoon, but the Red Raiders came back to win it 27 to 24, so the Aggies face elimination next week. They'll have their backs to the wall. They'll play Houston tough. Roman Anderson with a 26-yard, make it 36-yard attempt. It's good. He that young man's been perfect today. He's four of four in the field goal department. The long ones too. What, 41, 47, 51, 51. Wow. So it's now 59 to seven. That's the shortest field goal of the game. Roman Anderson, 36 yards. Andre Ware is through for the day. But I'll tell you what, Bum, in talking to him, now look at the total offense so far this season. Ware has more yardage than the entire Baylor team. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. I asked him if he was starting. Now, see, he has to do a push up for every point. Oh, I see. That's it. That, ki that kid might have some big arms. <laughs> I don't know who he is in that. He's finally getting some help. He's calling home. He says, Mom, I feel fine. I'll be home in time for a late dinner. I wonder now, the blitz is starting to come. Uh, the New York Post, the Washington Post, they ran some nice articles on where last week. ESPN along with ABC sent some people down to talk to Andre Ware. So he's starting to get the national attention now. The spotlight will be squarely focused on that young man for the next few weeks, don't you imagine? Yeah, I'll tell you, if you meet him in the dressing room, well, I think you'll be able to handle it. it he have nice a lot of poise, kid. doesn't he? Yeah. It just always seems like he's genuinely happy to be visiting oh, with yeah. him. Yeah. I know the attention is new to him. But I think he can handle it. I do too. He's getting ready to get a bunch of it. Because let me tell you folks, Tony Rice at Notre Dame is very deserved. Deserved if he gets the Heisman Trophy because of course he's on national television every week. This young man isn't because of the probation by Houston. But when you take his figures and stack them up next to Rice, it's no contest. Of course, he'll have to do it as many times as Rice has done it for Notre Dame. Well, for the Bears, it's been that kind of day. And Grant knows he's got another quarter. Ed Lovell, the quarterback. Baylor back on the six-yard line. A handoff to Eric Gilstrap, his first carry of the game, a six foot, 227 pounder out of Lake Highlands. Robert McDade, the backup left in, made the tackle for Houston. Tribute to your coaches. 
coaching staff. He's still over there coaching it. Oh, yeah. I don't think we're going to steal anything, fella. Well, you know, they got a lot of other games to go. They, they can't, you can't surrender. No. No, in fact, Baylor, this will only be the first loss in conference play, so the Bears, right. Bears are still very much in the conference race, and they know it. In fact, you can really have a race. Here's a good run by Lincoln Coleman. Now, here's the youngster you were talking about. He yeah. was, he came out of Dallas, Texas, and originally went to Notre Dame and transferred to Baylor. Got good ability. So a 10 yard gain to the 22 yard line, first and 10 for Baylor. Level gonna scramble right. Good job of running. Mm -hmm. And a gain of about eight on the play by Ed Level and Thomas knock him out of bounds. Looks like Craig Upchurch on the left, the all-conference forward for the University of Houston basketball team. And I'll tell you what, his basketball team, that's Derek Daniels, the point guard for Houston. That basketball team's going to have trouble scoring as much points as, <laughs> as the football team does. That's Richard and Upchurch and Daniels. Draw play, Lincoln Coleman. Nice job of running as he gets to the 40-yard line. That's a first down by Baylor. Chris Ellison on the tackle for Houston. So the backfield of Coleman, Gilstrap, and Ed Lovell running that football, and the time, more importantly, running off the clock, although they stopped the clock to move the chains, and now they'll have them going again with under 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. This game now is just over three hours old, and we still have a quarter to play. Reggie Miller in motion. Craig Vissi on the rush. And the only player down there close to it was Macedric Calloway. It was intended for Greg Anderson. Bum, this is the first time you have seen the University of Houston live. What are your impressions? I think they got a heck of a football team, obviously. Anybody can score that many points that quick, they've got to have a great team. And they score so quickly sometimes that defense spends a lot of time on the field. Yet it has done a pretty good job. And again, an offsides penalty by Houston. Tyrone Jones made the tackle. Whenever you've got a great offensive team and a great defensive team, too, though, you're usually going to win lots of ball games, and it looked like they're right in that, right in that spot. They got both both sides of the ball and got great special teams. I don't see a weakness. Hey, it has been a busy day for referee Bud Alexander and the rest of the officials. They've had as much a workout as either one of these two teams have. And they got them all up on the line of scrimmage. They're just playing flat, three deep zone. Just let them make it. Well, that's the end of the quarter, but it's not the end of the game. Believe it or not, still have one more quarter to play. In the Astrodome, the Houston Cougars leading the Baylor Bears 59-7. to now well, we still have 15 minutes left to play in this game. One more quarter, and the Cougars are putting up just some astronomical numbers. And a good pass play to David Frost, brought down by Macedric Calloway. Frost, out of Edmond, Oklahoma, came into the game with five catches on the season. 12 yards to the Cougars setting some more records today, especially for Andre Ware, now becoming the all-time leading 
passer for touchdown passes in a career in the Southwest Conference going by Kevin Murray. by Lovell just off the fingertips of Steve Stutzman. Big tight end. In fact, he has the only touchdown for Baylor. Touchdown reception earlier in the game, or at least early in the third period from Brad Gable, and it seems like about a week ago. In setting up the scenario, as far as Baylor is concerned now, the Bears will go to two and three on the season, but only one and one in Southwest Conference play. So Baylor's still very much in it because Houston has to go to College Station to play A&M next week. And the Aggies could help Baylor's cause with a win, of course, over Houston. Now, Houston, of course, is not eligible to go to the Cotton Bowl. So this really doesn't mean that much to Baylor. Because the Bears will get the Aggies in two weeks in Waco. Be third down and 14 now for Baylor. 14 minutes left to play in this game. It's been all Houston. Believe it or not, at the end of the first quarter, it was only 3 0 Cougars. Then the Cougars exploded for 33 points in the second period, and it was off to the races. Nice pass play. And it's taken out of bounds by Melvin Bonner, a freshman out of Van Bleck. And he's run out at about the 20 yard line. It's Lovell's throwing the ball pretty good, Bob. That was a good pass. The other little over thrown, the one before. Ball is on Houston's 22 yard line. Level going to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Put the middle for the zone with the tight end. And it's overthrown in the end zone. Good job of coverage by Macedric Calloway, man to man on David Frost. Frost just couldn't lose him. Chuck Weatherspoon. That's up there. They recognize the two deep count. zone in and try to split it with a tight end. On double corner and split the middle with a tight end, but the linebacker chased him and covered him. Be second down, still 10 for Baylor. Level looking for Reggie Miller, his wide receiver. Craig Thompson, number 26, was the defender, a senior out of Worthing High School in Houston. Level has been an excellent player at Baylor in his four years. Gable came in, however, his freshman year had a sensational year, was injured a bit last year. Level picked up the slack for it. And Hooper almost got him. Flag on the play and level. Oh no, he falls down. It looked like he may have twisted his knee. He's in terrible pain, laying on about the 35 yard line. He turned to throw the opposite way, and the right knee just gave way on it. The knee with the brace on it, of course, is the one that gave way. Oh, I hate to see this. Now he's going to try to plant and throw back the other way, and it just gives on it. Well, there was offsides called on Houston, so Baylor will get five yards. And Lovell will have to come out of the game. That's a tough break. Donald Cartman's going to do that. And just sting you real hard. And then you get up and walk around on a little and he's 
ease up a little. You had a quarterback that played with a tremendous amount of pain. Talking about Dan Pastorini. Oh yeah. Played hurt. Played hurt. Anytime. Mm -hmm. Anytime. Had some of his best on. games. He was more dangerous, I think. <laughs> Ricky Vestal, now a sophomore out of Houston, is the quarterback for Baylor, the third teamer. Third down, he needs five for a first. And he's thrown right into the fray, and it's almost intercepted. Going high was Alton Montgomery to try to get it. And it'll bring up fourth down for the Baylor Bears. This defensive backfield, Montgomery and Ellison, Cedric Calloway, Cornelius Price, they're not all in the game right now, but as a unit, they operate as well as any in the country. Montgomery has one interception on the season. Price has six. Jeff Ireland with a 34-yard attempt, and it's good. I'm glad to see him do that. I'm glad to see him go for a field goal, because that's what you should do. You should practice what you're going to have to do in the regular game rather than playing like the game's over here and you're not going to catch up anyhow. Might as well do the things that you'd normally do in a ball game. Kick the field goal on fourth down. So we've got 12-48 left to play in the game and it's Houston 59 and Baylor 10. Actually, Baylor had won the last three games played in the Astrodome between these two teams. And in fact, Houston had not won a home opener in Southwest Conference play since defeating the Aggies in 84. I'll tell you, there's quite a man right there, Grant Tad. One whale of a football coach. He's done an excellent job at Baylor. It's a little tougher to recruit up there in there at Texas University. Don't have anything to do with Baylor not being as good, it's just harder to recruit. It's easier to recruit at the University of Texas. You know, the amazing thing, uh, when Grant came to Baylor in 1972, I think the Bears were something like 3 and 28. Hey, He's had a lot of opportunities to leave, but he likes it there. Well, I think he loves the school and vice versa. Kimball Anders. No, you're too late now. You got to bring it out. He stepped across, didn't he, Bob? Yeah. Excuse me, I didn't mean <laughs> King's X. So he got down to about the 10. Alton Montgomery, the strong safety for Houston out of Griffin, Georgia, a senior. He's going to be on a lot of all-conference teams. So is his left corner, Cornelius Price, you see in the picture. Ellison may be one of the best free safeties around. He came into the game with two interceptions. And Cedric McCalloway with two interceptions. That Cougar defense really is an offense, the way it attacks. That's what they've been today. David Klinger will be the quarterback. That's their running game. Good job, friend. That's a running game. Throw a four-yard pass and run with Big Robert McDade of the Cougars. Interesting story, McDade. Senior out of Corsicana. He went to SMU, and then, of course, when the Ponies got the death penalty, all of the players could transfer. McDade came to Houston. He was a down lineman at SMU. They made him a linebacker at Houston. Now he's back on the defensive line. He's done quite a job as a backup to Warren, Hooper, Oglesby, and Beasy. Not time for the catch up. No, it doesn't either. Weatherspoon bounces off. Dude. Bounces off. And he's across the 30 to the 32. Mike Welch made the tackle. Weatherspoon now, that was his eighth carry for 42 yards on the ground. And almost 100 receivers. 115. 115. That's almost 100. <laughs> yeah, it is. Brian Williams on the outside. Nobody picked him up. And Williams goes down into Baylor territory at the 40 yard line. Robert Blackman ran him out of bounds. Blackman hadn't give up. 
22 yard pass and run play by Houston. That moves the chains. 11.38 left to play in the fourth quarter. And off Weatherspoon up the middle. Big hole. Bounces off one to the 31 yard line. Mike Welch again having. Don't you know Welch at 200 pounds when he seems, sees Weatherspoon coming? Welch is the free safety saying, hey, I'm getting tired of making the tackle on this guy. Again, there's the front line for Houston with a gaping hole in that Baylor defensive line. Kimball Anders with the ball down to the 25 yard line. Quarterback, I've done a good on him. Frankie Smith. Zipping on that. Well, you know, he'll be a senior when Ware retires. Uh, Klinger will have one more year. Just a sophomore out of Stratford High School. Second down and four for the Cougars. 10-50 and counting. And off, Weatherspoon and that time it was read well by Baylor. Number 55, Gary Hayes, the middle linebacker out of Klein, was right there. Looks like he's going to run through. Loss of four, and it'll be third down, and Houston will need 10 for a first. gets away and overthrows Kimball Anders at about the 20. And will bring up fourth down. Klinger so far is four of six for 34 yards. So bring on Roman Anderson. He's a perfect four for four and he'll try to make it five for five. He has a 51 yarder. This will be 48. from yep, 48 yards. Hmm. He kicks it awfully low. If they get any kind of middle rush, they should block it. Man, they did. James Francis was the man who got up there. And a block is thrown. Baylor gets on the ball at the five. So the ball is killed by Eric Long down on the five yard line. We're going to take a break in the action. 940 left to play in this game. The Cougars lead it 59 to 10. So the Baylor Bears will be back on their own five yard line. Handoff looks like Lincoln Coleman as he gets out to about the 10. And that's Ricky Vestal, the quarterback for Baylor. Vestal, a 6'3 sophomore out of Houston. Coming out of the game, Robert McDade and Darren Warren for Houston. All kinds of new faces in the Houston defense. We'll try to get them for you here. Vestal fakes that draw play. Big rush by Houston, and here comes a tackle by number 77, James Bevel, a 232-pound sophomore out of Jasper, Texas. Good coverage by Houston. Six, 
what you call a coverage sack. There's nowhere to go, huh? Yep. You got somebody with everybody, you got to eat the ball. Yeah, time to throw it, didn't have anybody open. The draw play, Lincoln Coleman at about the five. On third down, he needed about 11, so Baylor will have to punt. Coleman so far has rushed seven times for 25 yards. Ed Thomas made the tackle for Houston, a senior out of New Orleans. He was a tight end when Jack Party came here. And of course, when they did away with the tight ends, Thomas had to look for a job. So he said, make me a linebacker, coach. And to find him a spot. Yeah. Rudder. Big rush by Houston. Nice kick. A good punter. Weatherspoon all by his lonesome with a fair catch at midfield. Since Houston went for the block and he didn't have any blockers, Weatherspoon said, I think I've done enough. And so he's got good judgment. <laughs> Bum, you've, of course, coached in the high school ranks in Texas and worked your way up with the colleges at A&M and Houston and then to the pro ranks, but I think they do probably as good a job as anywhere here in not only the high school coaches, but the college coaches in the state of Texas. I think the state of Texas has got the best football program in the whole country. No, I've seen them all, Pennsylvania, California, the ones that are supposed to be good, but believe me, the high school coaches and the college coaches in Texas are the best. They got so many of them, you know, we get so many football players here in the state of Texas. If it wasn't for the state of Texas, Oklahoma couldn't play. California, <laughs> Oklahoma, a lot of people. We've seen kind of an exodus of some of the blue chippers on the in the last uh, four or five years, but we're seeing them start to come back now. Yeah. And uh, I think with rejuvenation of the conference in the next several years, we'll see most of those kids staying at home. The conference probably has the best bunch of head coaches now that's had in a long time. At least the feeling among the coaches is a good one. They got some parity. Of course, alumni don't want parity. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Klinger sacked on the play by John Godfrey. Yeah, that's right. It, it, if you coach for AM or Texas, they want to win. Yeah. They don't, they don't want parity to be amongst the other six or seven. <laughs> Good rush. There's Good Klinger. speed rush, yeah. He's the one who plays linebacker for him when they, he stands up and plays linebacker. He's done a good job. He's had some big plays for Baylor today. Cougars have just had more of them. Mm -hmm. Correction, officially a loss of eight yards. Flinger going to Hazard. And he showed good judgment because when he looked up, saw a big number 84 standing in front of him. He said, I've gone far enough. So Klinger just keeping the ball in the field of play and keeping the clock running at 5.57. You know, against the University of Oklahoma, I think the Sooners jumped out to a big first half lead over Baylor, and then Baylor played them dead even in the second half. Georgia got a couple of fortunate breaks against Baylor, but Baylor's defense, for the most part, has played well all year long. But this is another breed of cat, this Cougar offense. And it gets a Houston bounce. Yeah, inside the third. Simon Rodriguez has punted as much today as he has all season coming into this game. That was a 31 yarder, so he has punts of 52, 39, 35, 45, and 31. He's even for the year, isn't he? Yeah. Five in this one and five for the other three games. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. I he read the stats. Yeah, he doesn't get to punch, uh, punt much, does he? No, he don't have any practice. <laughs> no game practice, no game experience. So they'll set the chains and we'll get going. 522 left to play in this one. Vestal going long. Oh, he had a receiver. Right that was Melvin Bonner, the big freshman out of Van Bleck. And he had a step on Zach Chapman and couldn't bring it in. 
I like this Ricky best one. He puts that in there. Yep. Should have had that ball. Had him right there. Yep. Festival. Festival out of Cypress Creek. Backed up Brad Gable last season. Completed 17 of 33 passes last year for over 200 yards in the brief amount of time. Here's going to be a reverse. And Reggie yeah. Miller get wide. Oh, he got a block, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And Miller knocked out of bounds. Oh, somebody laid a block over there and may have been that big offensive lineman. Terry Gray was the young man. Let's see now the block at the top. Let's see. There's Gray. Boy, he just took somebody out, and he's down on the field. Yeah, but the guy that did the blocking is the one that's down. That's a young man that came down the tunnel and wanted to meet you yeah, before sure. the game today. Sure. A young man out of Klein Oak High School in Houston. Nice here. young man. Terry Gray, 6'2", 285 pounds, starting left tackle for Baylor. You know, that's what happens late in some of these games. You see a lot of injuries because fatigue. Play gets One thing, yeah. fatigue too. Play, play gets, gets a little sloppy. Mm -hmm. You're playing with people you haven't been playing with. And you're not as well coordinated with. Pitch out on the option play. Lincoln Coleman, nice cutback. And he's across midfield into Houston territory at the 48-yard line, brought down by Tyler Mucho, freshman out of San Antonio. The kid's a good runner. He I really like is, yeah. Big kid, 215 pounds. A nice stride, too. Mm -hmm. A little like Eric Dickerson on that play. tackle this time in the backfield. Good pursuit by Houston. Carlos Leon, one of the good special teamers in on the tackle. So it looks like the Cougars now will be 1-0 in conference play, but that really doesn't make any difference to Baylor no. or Tech or AM because U of H can't go to the Cotton Bowl. Right, right. Whoever, whoever comes in second is going to go. <laughs> That's right. So there's still a lot of battles to be won on the gridirons in the next few weeks. Texas are playing Rice tonight. So Texas could be undefeated. Yeah. Having played SMU and Rice. Best door was being chased out of bounds by Eric Blunt. Carlos Eric Blunt chasing him out of bounds along with Leon. Ricky threw for over 1,200 yards at Cypress Creek in his senior year, 17 touchdowns. And that uh, Cypress Creek team finished 8-1-1. One, one. one 16 5A championship. And he was rated very highly by the Houston Chronicle, Austin American Statesman, one of the real recruited quarterbacks. Defense and holding called on Houston. For Baylor. This game, for all practical purposes, was over at halftime. A blitz by Houston, and Vestal throws it away. Stops the clock with 349 left to play in the game. Well, the Cougars, even though they can't go to the Cotton Bowl, they'll be 4 0 when this game is over. They're number 12 in the nation in the AP poll, but in some of the computer polls, they're as high as number one and in number five in the USA poll, and they could move up in those polls. I would think they would. Because I mean, Baylor's a good football team. Mm -hmm. You know, who you beat makes as much difference as how you beat them. When they asked Jack Pardee, said, do you, are you think 
you're number one? He said, well, I, I don't know whether we're number one, but I don't know who's better. <laughs> Isn't he a nice guy? Yeah. yeah. Isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's something. One of the most decorated coaches in all of, of football. He's won everywhere he's been. Been with the Bears. They won. The Redskins won. He won in USFL. the USFL. USFL. He won in the World Football League. In the World Football League. Florida Blazers, and he won with the Gamblers. Woo. Almost intercepted by Houston at the 15-yard line. Kenny Perry almost got his hands on the ball for Houston. I think, you know, in looking up Pardee's career, he's been inducted into so many Hall of Fames. He's in the A&M Hall of Fame, the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame, the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, and the College Football Hall of Fame. And they beat Kansas. And he beat the Big C. Yes, he did. And came back and played for oh, George yeah. Allen on a winning team. Oh, yeah. Vestal, nice oh. job of hanging in there. Good hit. And a nice reception by Bonner. Melvin Bonner, but Vestal hung in there and took a shot. Craig Thompson made the tackle for Houston. You know, Bill Yeoman did such an excellent job for years here with this Veer offense with Houston. I think that how fortunate the Cougars were to land Jack Pardee mm -hmm. at this time for the Cougars. It's really a, put together a heck of a stand. Vestal, nice shot across oh, the middle and a lot of hit. contact at the 10. You bet there was. Kenny Perry along with Carlos Leon. That Leon is a hitter. Mm. And it's been a long day for Reggie Miller. You know, there's not a lot of meat on that 5'9 frame. He only weighs 167 pounds. He's taken some shots today, hasn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Two forty-nine left to play. The Cougars put this one away in the second quarter with 33 points to take a 36-0 lead at halftime. Showing everybody why. Considered one of the top teams in the nation. There's an interception. And a run back by Zach Chapman, a freshman from Beaumont. His first ever college interception. He's happy, huh? He is happy. 2.37 left to play. The Cougars have put this one away. We'll be back with the final moments in just a moment. Take a look at the Budweiser scoreboard, a score I gave you earlier, Texas Tech by three over AM, 27 to 24. Notre Dame continues to roll. Got by Stanford, 27 to 17. Miami really put it on Cincinnati, 56 to nothing. Only problem for Jimmy Johnson at Dallas, that Cincinnati now the Bengals. Not that Cincinnati club. Nebraska, 58. Kansas State, 7. Pittsburgh defeating Temple, 27 to 3. And Illinois defeating Ohio State today, 34 to 14. By the way, that Zach Chapman youngster, as we take a look at David Klinger, the backup quarterback for Houston, Chapman uh, came out of Beaumont as one of the highly recruited wide receivers in the state, along with Jamie Mouton, a freshman out of Houston Lee. They both asked to be put on defense so they could see some playing time. And Jack Party says he may keep them there. They're so talented. Cody Smith made the reception. James Francis on the tackle. Boy, there's a good one. James Francis, big number 38. Good man, isn't it? Oh, good go to the huddle, fella. Throwing long, Klinger for William. Covered by Clifford Ellison down on the five yard line. A sophomore out of San Antonio. bring up third down.
There's Bevel and Jason Davis. A couple of the backup defensive players you don't get a chance to see very often because they play behind Warren Hooper, Oglesby, and Veazey. Getting a lot of playing time here in the second half tonight. Well, unfortunately, that pass incompletion stopped the clock. Cleaner across the middle. Nice coverage by Baylor. Whoop, Lerlick. Here comes a flag. Continued for uh, Emmanuel Hazard. Frankie Smith came in a little early. I'm really impressed with their defensive line. All good defensive football teams have good defensive linemen, or they don't have good defensive football teams. Has Mighty it. close for a game this, this wide open. Well, I think so. But you know, the referees aren't supposed to quit working either. That's true. I used to suspect they did, though, sometimes. I think his batteries are about to wear out on that. Speaker. Well, we're down to the. They don't have the two minute warning, but I'm, I'm we glad. got it today. This ain't gonna be a booger. Three on one side, and two on the other. Well, now they. Well, now they even it up. They put Anders in the backfield. Winger. Oh, there he goes. Hazard at the 20. Cuts back at the 10. He's at the five. Touchdown, Emmanuel Hazard. Five touchdown catches. For the leading receiver in the nation, Emmanuel Hazard. He now has 13 receptions for 218 yards. And that man has a migraine headache. Grant Tad. Oh, Klinger showed a lot of poise, didn't he, Bob? Mm, yes, sir. Didn't get right. This is a great run, isn't it? Cutting back here is a great run. <laughs> Look at him go. Unbelievable. What a day for Emmanuel Hazard. The extra point is good by Roman Anderson. And this is almost a basketball score for Houston. How does he get out of this trap here? I don't know. He just get down the ground. Cut himself, good balance with one hand. Bump, he, I don't think he's as quick maybe as Billy Johnson, but he's got a lot of those little he looks cute like moves, doesn't he? Yeah, huh? yeah. I don't know, he might be. Oh, he's, he's moving around real good out there. Billy was up there. He'd, he'd make you think he wasn't going to get loose, and then all of a sudden he's five yards ahead of you. Well, that's a new record for touchdown receptions in a game. Five. Now, if he's calling the press box, they ought to tell him to sit down. And wait till next week. It's hard to score five touchdowns on your whole team. There's just one guy get five touchdowns. Or if you're even in just a scrimmage. <laughs> Against yourself. <laughs> Against That's there. a new Southwest Conference record for Emmanuel Hazard. Five touchdown passes in a game, 218 yards. And the machine, the offensive machine of Houston just keeps rolling along. The numbers that Houston keeps putting up on the board, just astronomical. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't either. I'd heard a lot about it, but I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be this awesome. And folks, this Baylor is a heck of a football Yeah, player. that's what surprises me. I saw him play great defense last week. For Taylor will take it inside his 10 yard line. Try to bring it back out. Looks like there may be a clip, but Ted Pardee was right there. He's a demon on special teams, number 32. Well, they've even got some championship caliber players in the stands, don't they, here in Houston? Emmanuel Hazard coming out of California. Very highly recruited junior college player out of San Francisco, and he has found him a home in a hurry here at Houston. And of course, with Berlin Brown going out in the Arizona State game with a 
broken ankle, that means more passes for Hazard to catch because at the time Brown went out, he was leading the nation in pass receiving. Let's see, Hazard now today has 13 receptions. So he has 46 on the season already. And the Cougars have played only four games. 46 receptions in four games. In four games, 46 receptions. Let's get his yardage and touchdown. Total offense in the game, 614 yards now. Remember, Houston came in averaging 658 yards a game, so the Cougars are just about at it. Hand off Lincoln Coleman. And he gets some yardage around the left side. So right now, through four games, 46 catches for 669 yards for Emmanuel Hazard. They're not even halfway through with the season yet. Well, he's going to have over 1,000 yards before we get halfway through the season. I know it. Just incredible the numbers. And, of course, let's also give credit to the young quarterback, David Klinger, who well. already in this game. Let's see Coleman running with him. Good job by Coleman. Good effort. Klinger, 8 for 11 for 75 yards and a touchdown. Well, that stopped the clock. We have 38 seconds left, if you can believe it. And the game is now three hours and 45 minutes long. I like to see that kid struggle like he does to make more yards. Oh, Coleman, yeah. I like to see a football player don't give up. No quit in this Baylor team. You can nope. bet on that. Nope. Been a tough contest, but the Cougars have made believers out of me. This is the first time I've seen them live. I, I looked at some tapes along with you as we checked them out against Arizona State and against Temple. But that young man, Andre Ware, has a good understanding of this offense. And so do his receivers. And brother, they are tough to stop. So here we are now, down to the final five seconds. And a flag has been thrown. Oh. Yeah. So we still have two seconds left to play in the game. Going to be a personal foul on the Houston defense, so Baylor will have to run one more play. Andre Ware today. 33 for 53, 514 yards, and six touchdown passes. And that's the end of the football game. The Houston Cougars have now gone to 4-0. On the season, Baylor 2-3. Baylor now 1-1 one one in the Southwest Conference. Houston 1-0. And, oh. and Grant Taft congratulating young Andre Ware. Gentlemen, isn't he? Well, I tell you, Grant Taft, not only one of the best football coaches in the nation, one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet. Two of them, Jack Pardee and Grant Taft. And I think you could make Grant Taft a believer now. Jack Pardee certainly has him quite a football team, doesn't he, Bum? Yeah, he And Andre Ware has himself a whole bushel of new records. <laughs> oh, yeah today with and just starting yeah seven more games left to play well they play the Houston alma mater and Jack party has to be proud of his team 4 and 0 final score from the dome the Cougars 66 and Baylor 10 we'll be back with some final comments in just a moment